Have you heard the energy price cap is changing? I still don't really know what it is or what it actually means for my bills. I can't keep up with it all. Does it drive you mad? No, mate. I'm with Scottish Gas, so I'm already beating the price cap. I'll get the drinks in. Don't worry, you don't have to know everything about the energy price cap. Because at Scottish Gas, we're keeping our prices below the April cap with our fixed price tariff. And if we release an even better fixed tariff in the future, you can switch for free. Search Scottish Gas Tariffs. Eligibility and T's and C's apply. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast. With Lucas Volvo. Looking to sell your Volvo? Contact them today for a no-obligation quotation. It's game day, and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard on a big weekend of league action across Scotland. Celtic can go top with a win over St Johnston before Rangers respond at Dundee tomorrow. It's 5th v 4th in Ayrshire as Kilmarnock host St Mirren. Managerless Aberdeen go to Motherwell as Hibs welcome Livingston and Hearts go to Ross County. I'm Gordon Duncan and joining me today you have Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Keevans. Happy birthday to the Dazzler today but the icing on the cake comes at 3 o'clock with these matches sensational Celtic could go top against St Johnston but they have been problematic for them already this season Celtic had better go top or there'll be a frosty atmosphere at Celtic Park and what about Motherwell if Aberdeen failed to win there today it's 12 games without a win equaling the club's worst ever record and if Aberdeen lose and Ross County win against Hearts and Dingwall Aberdeen go second bottom crisis anybody this is going to be a great day Mark it certainly is yeah good fixtures at the top uh, middle and bottom of the Premiership Look at Ross County at home to Hearts. Can they get anything from that to get further away from Livy, who are away to Hibs, the 2 2 specialists? And like you said, Celtic with the opportunity to go top with a, a win at home against St Johnson. Then when you look at the Championship, Dundee United's result last night getting beat by Dunfermline means Wraith Rovers have the opportunity to go top there. Who could have seen that happening? Yeah, Busty so, boy, how's yeah, it going? Yeah, another year. A wee busty haircut to match the occasion as well. As well. Yes. 62 and still going strong. Good on you. I'm looking alright for 62. Yeah, actually, reluctantly, you think so? reluctantly, I would actually agree with that. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to this afternoon. I've got to say, I'm looking at these fixtures and I think the guys round about the grounds have got exciting times ahead, plenty of goals. I was hearing today St Mirren are taking something like 2,500 travelling fans mm. to Rugby Park. Terrific games ahead. Yes, strap yourselves in because we are getting to that point in the season where every result is absolutely crucial. Whether that's top, middle or bottom of the table, you can tweet us all afternoon at Clyde SSB and of course we'll give you the chance to have your say on the phones a bit later on this afternoon. But without further ado, let's go to Celtic Park. Celtic against St Johnston and Andrew McLean has the teams. Yeah, Celtic with a chance to move back to the top of the table for today, at least if they can get the better of St Johnston here. Brendan Rodgers said yesterday he's looking for a quick start after that stuttering 45 minutes they had away to St Johnston in December. They got the win eventually, but that type of poor performance at home here has led to some moans and groans from the crowd, so Rodgers putting an importance on starting on the front foot today. We've seen what that can do as well, especially when they put seven past Dundee here not long ago. Hard to really gauge St Johnston under Craig Levine, unbeaten in their last two, but four defeats on the trot before that. They did need a late goal to rescue a point against bottom of the table Livingston last time out. Craig Levine, though, taking confidence from their last performance against Celtic. As for team news, well, Brendan Rodgers concerned about their injury problems this season. Liam Scales, the latest to drop out. He's out of the squad altogether. Adam Ida, he drops to the bench. In come Cameron Carter-Vickers and Kyogo in from the start. So it's Joe Hart in goal. The back four, Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Stephen Welsh and Greg Taylor. The midfield three, Tomoki Iwata, Matt O'Reilly and Paolo Bernardo. Nicholas Kuhn and Dyson Maida either side of Kyogo. The substitutes, Bain, Lagabielka, Ida, Home, O, Vata, Kelly, Forrest and Ralston. As for St Johnson, three changes for them, a change of shape 
as well. They'll go to a back five today. Clark, Jayasimi and Kempioka all drop out. Considine, Carey and Sidibe all come in. Dimitar Mitov in goal for them. The back five, David Keltons, Ryan McGowan, Liam Gordon, Andy Considine and Luke Robinson. The midfield three, Sven Sprangler, Dan Phillips and Graham Carey. It'll be Matt Smith playing off Adama Sidibe up top. The substitutes, Richards, Gallagher, May, Clark, Kucheriabi, Kempioka, Franschak and Smith. The referee for this one at Celtic Park is Ewan Anderson. The VAR is Chris Graham. Well, Hugh, what does this one mean for Celtic today? Well, they simply cannot afford to look the gift horse in the mouth in the way in which they did when they went to Tynecastle to play Hearts a couple of weeks ago. The performance against Livingston in the Cup last week was poor, and Brendan Rodgers knows he needs an upgrade today. Defensively, they'll be helped by Carter Vickers being there, and the partnership with Welsh is one of many partnerships that has been tried this season. But for me, the standout about team selection is Kyogo back. I thought that Adam Ida looked well off the pace against Livingston last Sunday. Kyogo came on and scored a goal in what has been a difficult season for him in the goal scoring department. But I think that Brendan Rodgers has got them in the right order this time. Kyogo on the park, Ida on the bench. Mark, any surprises, any notable talking points from that Celtic team for you? Well, a couple. I think uh, the inclusion of Carter Vickers back in the side again, you know, you don't think that's the mo- one of the most important sele- uh, bits of team selection uh, for a home game against St. Johnson, but it is. Defensively, it brings a soundness and a confidence to the back line. But I think Hugh touched on it last week, how he moves the ball is so important to how Celtic start moves. And he's better in skills, Welsh, Lager, Bielka and Navrosky. He starts... Uh, the moves so well for Celtic you then look down Kuhn holding his place in the wide areas I thought he was excellent last week and he has to build on that but of course the big one top end of the pitch Kyogo and how Brendan Rodgers could do with him <laughs> having one of his days where he causes the St Johnson backline no end of problems and gets on the score sheet a couple of times because it's going to be a different challenge for them today than it was last week I think Lovey promoted bodies forward and got the rewards for it because it's a cup game the pressure was off them and they made life a bit difficult for Celtic. I think it'll be the opposite today. I think St. Johnson, the Craig Levine, will defend their own box and it'll be Celtic will have to be patient. You know, they'll have to work that back line and they'll have to have runners in beyond. And I think that's why Kyogo's in the side. I've got to be honest, I think it'll be a comfortable afternoon from Celtic. Um I think they will get a few goals. Um I like the look of the, the front three. Kuhn I thought was excellent last week. Um, and he needed that performance because he came in for a little bit of criticism uh, whether you say rightly so because he came in with a big price tag in January he was uh, spoke about Brendan Rodgers talking about you know he's a he was a, a, a bit more classy than the rest of the wingers. I had to prove that. I thought he was good. Kill go back in. I think there's plenty of goals here for Celtics afternoon. I think they will win comfortable. It's back to that psychology, Mark, that we've been mentioning all season, but it obviously ramps up a bit considerably once you get to mid-March. We all know Celtic lost top spot round about a month ago, I think it was, and missed the opportunity, if you like, then when Rangers lost against Motherwell and Celtic did the same the following day at Tynecastle. Is it as simple as all you can do today is, is try and win, win well, officially go top, leave it up to Rangers tomorrow, see if, if the psychology of it or if the exertions of, of midweek catches up on them? Uh, listen, without doubt, winning is key at this stage. A couple of weeks, six, well, about die, four weeks ago I said winning is key. Performance has got the window. Now, there's no doubt about it that every Celtic fan going along wants to see a performance that's entertaining and yields three points. But no doubt Brendan Rodgers and the players have been in this position before at the tail end of the season where they know how crucial no slipping up is. Now, people say, oh, it's a foregone conclusion. Celtic against St. Johnson, difference between the team. You only have to go back a couple of weeks to see Motherwell going to Ibrox and winning. So they'll know the dangers, they'll know the pitfalls and they'll know what's ahead of them. They'll know the tempo, they need to play it. Um, and three points is key. Now, if they can match up with a performance and guys like Kuhn and Kyogo can get back to... Their best, then brilliant, but three points is key. That's you got the team news then ahead of Celtic against St Johnston. Looking forward to that one in the east end of Glasgow, but that is just the start of it today in the Scottish Premiership. Big games everywhere, and in terms of two teams that are right next to each other in the table, what a game Roger Hanna has in his hands between Kilmarnock and St Mirren.
Yeah, you're absolutely right, Gordon. I think at the start of the season, you would not necessarily have considered this fixture to be crucial in the race for Europe. But if, if Aberdeen do not win the Scottish Cup, and it looks highly unlikely at the minute, it would mean either Kilmarnock or St Mirren grabbing that passport into the Europa Conference League qualifiers uh, next later on in the year, of course. Stephen Robinson's buddies, who haven't been in Europe since 1987, they're in pole position with just nine games of this Premiership season to go. But Derek McInnes' side said it, still reeling from last weekend's Cup defeat to Aberdeen. They're just one point behind them and would, of course, leapfrog them with a win here at Rugby Park today. There's not been much between the teams in their meetings this season, Gordon. It was a 1-1 draw here in September and then Kelly managed a 1-0 win in Paisley between Christmas and New Year. They will be without their influential defender, Lewis Mayo, this afternoon. He's got a suspension after that red card at Dundee a couple of weeks ago. And St Mirren backed by 2,500 fans, as the Dazzler said, ready to blow away some cobwebs. They haven't played for a couple of weeks since that dramatic league win over Aberdeen when Toyose Olisanya scored those two goals deep into added time. Come on, like two changes from that Aberdeen Cup defeat. Mayo, as we say, is suspended. Corian Daba drops to the bench. Robbie Dees in the fit again. Matty Kennedy come back into the team. So it's Will Dennis in goal. It's a back three today. Joe Wright, Stuart Finlay and Robbie Dees. Across the middle, Danny Armstrong, David Watson, Liam Donnelly, Liam Polworth and Matty Kennedy. And up top, Marley Watkins with the skipper, Kyle Vassell. On the bench, O'Hara and Daba, McKenzie, Balagizi, Murray, Cameron, Stuart, Mackay Stephen and Van Veen. St Mirren, four changes from that Aberdeen League win two weeks ago. James Bolton misses out with a broken hand and Elvis Buomono is unwell with Quan and Lewis Jamison dropping to the bench. In come Charles Dunn, Ryan Flynn, Marco Hara the skipper and Connor McMenamin. So it's Zach Hemming back at Kilmarnock in goal. It's a back three also. Marcus Fraser, Alec Gogic and Charles Dunn. Across the middle, Ryan Flynn, Marco Hara, Caelan boyd Munce, and Scott Tanzer with a front three of Connor McMenamin, Michael Mandron and another former Kelly man, Greg Kilty. On the bench, Urminski, Taylor and Brown, Quan, Bacchus and Jamison, Scott, Olisanya and a younger. The referee is Ross Hardy just in his second Premiership appointment. The VAR is Alan Muir. And an interesting start for you, Gordon. St Mirren's last five visits here have all ended in draws. They've not had a win here for 11 years since John McGinn was among the goal scorers in 2013. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to wish the Dazzler many happy returns in his big birthday. I checked this morning, Gordon, to see what star sign he was. He's a Pisces, apparently. I mean, you click on the Pisces to see what actually it means. The first sentence it says to explain the character of a Pisces is extremely creative and powerful in their love for other people. They've certainly got that bang on. <laughs> I think the less said about that, the better, particularly that powerful bit. I don't want to know too much more. Anyway, let's go to Motherwell against Aberdeen, because again, on the pitch, hugely intriguing, and even off it as well. Aberdeen have got quite a bit going on. Fraser Wishart. They certainly have. I don't know how you even try to describe their season. You talk about off the pitch. My goodness, what an absolute mess. Three managers, it's been some season for them. And from the high of last week's Cup win, and they've got a semi-final place to look forward to. They had a Cup final appearance, remember, against Rangers in December. They were in the game for a long period, but now they're absolutely in a relegation battle. And Hugh was talking earlier about crisis. There's always a club in crisis in Scotland not long ago. It was Muddle, but now it's definitely Aberdeen because uh, they're in a perilous position. And I talked to a few people who were at the game during the week against uh, Dundee, and they say it's the worst that Aberdeen have played all season. They find themselves only three points ahead of Ross County, and they play County, of course, in two weeks' time at Petordry. So a really important period. He was mentioning stats about 12 games without a win being the most ever. They get five points in their last 11 league games, not a win since the 2nd of January. And it's an employment to 10th place. Mioski hasn't scored for seven games. It's all looking pretty grim on the park, never mind off the park, as you mentioned earlier, Gordon. So they need the result quickly. But, you know, they're playing against a mother old team who stuck by their manager and they are on the back of a win at Ibrox last week plenty of confidence they'll be looking at the top six now rather than down the table as seemed uh, likely a few weeks ago and of course they're just four points behind Dundee in sixth place so a win equally important to Mother as Aberdeen today and I have to say well done to Mother for sticking by the manager the going was tough but they've got a real goal threat now and they can exploit the frailties in the Don's back lane Blair Spittle's been the star man all season for me assists, goals his general play Theo Bear of of course, has come alive with Spittle's assists and has got an international recall. So a fascinating 90 minutes ahead. There'll be goals here. 
I think both defenders, defences can ship goals. Both have an attacking threat, but defeat today for Dons will just bring more gloom and doom or patodry in two weeks to stew about things before that critical game at home to County. Only one change for Muddle from that win at Ibrox is Dravkowski that drops to the bench and in comes Sam Nicholson in an attacking move in that midfield area in a 3-5-2 formation. Liam Kelly's in goals, Ben Casey, Bevis Mugabe and Shane Blaney at the back. Five across the middle, Stephen O'Donnell, Blair Spittle, Lennon Miller, Sam Nicholson and Paul McGinn with Jack Vale and Theo Bear as the strikers. Aston Oxford, Georgie Gent, Andy Hardy, Davor Drakowski, Ollie Shaw, Adam Devine, Moses de Bia, Mark Ferry and Dylan Wells are on the bench. Maybe surprisingly only one change from Aberdeen from that awful performance in midweek. Killian Phillips drops to the bench and Leighton Clarkson comes in in the number 10 position. So they go with a 4-2-3-1. Formation Kelly Ruse in goals. Nicky Devlin, Angus McDonald, Stephen Gartenman and Jack McKenzie at the back. Graham Shinney and Connor Barner, the sitters in midfield with Jamie McGrath, Leighton Clarkson and Junior Hoylett behind the lone striker Boyan Majowski. On the bench for the Dons, Ross Duan, Richard Jensen, Duke, James McGarry, Killian Phillips, Esther Sockler, Dante Polvara, Ryan Duncan and Jack Milne. The referee today for this big game at Fir Park is Willie Collum and VAR is Steve Stephen McLean. What a game we have in store then at Fir Park. What about the bottom side in the division? Livingston, they go to Easter Road and David Friel's there as well. Yeah, Gordon, I think it's fair to say it's two teams in a race against time now. Hibs really need to win if they're going to achieve their aim of making the top six. As for Livy, as you said, bottom of the league, seven points adrift and they need to win if they're going to pull off the great escape somehow. I think Hibs, will, Hibs fans will arrive here today probably not knowing what to expect from their team. You look at the stats, are five unbeaten the Premiership, but that 98th minute equaliser to Ross County in midweek probably summed up their season. Nick Montgomery blamed a dodgy throw-in decision for that draw. He spent a fair bit of time moaning about refs in the last couple of weeks, but I don't know, may, may want to look at his own sides. Awful defending as well, it's been a real problem for Hibs. There are a lot of attacking players, some really good players at the top end of the pitch, but they've kept just one clean sheet in their last 11 league games. And as Mark said earlier, after Ross County, they've now drawn two each nine times this season. It's incredible. However, this could be a big weekend for them. They will leapfrog Dundee into the top six with a win today and could obviously stay there if Rangers get a result at Dens Park tomorrow. Martin Boyle remains out with that concussion from the head injury against Rangers last week, but Nick Montgomery does bring in Adam LaFondra up front and Chris Cadden also comes in for Lewis Miller so Abs are going to line up looks like a sort of 4-2-3-1 formation David Marshall in goals Chris Cadden Rocky Bashiri, Will Fish and Jordan Abita Nick Tarios Triantis and Joe Newell will anchor the midfield Eli Ewan Emiliano Marcondes and Mizian Mayolida in behind Adam LaFondra subs for Hibs are Wallacott Levitt Stevenson Mariah Welsh Whitaker Hanlon Mayenda Tavares and McIntyre as for Livy, look, they're in deep trouble. They're trying to catch Ross County. They're trying their very, very best. David Martindale said, you know, they really need to cut a seven-point gap before the split to have any chance, you would think. But they did win 3-2 here back in August, and you never know there could be a repeat today. Played pretty well at Celtic Park last week. David Martindale has only made three changes. Shamal George comes back in and goals. Jason Holt's in. David Carson as well. Michael McGovern, Michael Nottingham and Dan Mackay are out. So Livy are going to line up 4-3-3 today. Shamal George in goals. Jimmy Brandon, Ayo Obelai, Sean Kelly and Christian Montano at the back. Midfield three of Jason Holt, David Carson and Stephen Kelly with Stephen Bradley, Teddy Yenge and Joel Nubley up front. Subs for Levy are McGovern, Hamilton, Donnellan, Guthrie, Devlin, Anderson, Sangari, Culbert and Sharp. The referee at Easter Road is Nick Walsh and Don Robertson is on the VAR. Big games everywhere you look and the last but not least in the Premiership this afternoon is Ross County against Hearts and Dave Galloway is the man. Well Gordon Ross County go into this one lifted by a 98th minute equaliser against Hibs on Wednesday to grab a draw. That gave their survival battle a major boost and who knows just how big the points they gained that night could eventually turn out to be. It also means they're building a wee bit of momentum on their own patch. That's three games unbeaten at home. Hearts, though, come here in very good form with 10 wins and just the one defeat in League and Cup in the previous 12 games. Clinching third place is a mere formality. They've accumulated 55 points so far. That's the highest total at this stage of the campaign for eight years. And they'll be backed by a big, expectant, noisy support this afternoon when I arrived in Dingwall earlier uh, in the day. The fans were already making their presence felt. Looking at the teams then, and there are three Three changes for Ross County. In come Loic, Ayina, Jan Danda and Jordan White. Out drop Josh Sims, uh, Brandon Keller and Eamon Brophy. So George Wickens in goals. A back three of Michi Effetti, Jack Baldwin and Ryan Leake. 
Across the middle, Loic Ayina, Connor Randall, Victor Latouri, Jan Danda and Josh Reed. Up front, Jordan White, partners Simon Murray. The subs for the Staggies uh, today, uh, Laidlaw, Bothwick Jackson, Brown, Sims, Sheaf, Harmon, Henderson, Keller and Brophy. Hearts make uh, four changes. In comes Xander Clark, Nat Atkinson, Alex Cochran and Aidan Denham. Out go Craig Gordon, Dexter Lembekiza, Cami Devlin and George Grant. So Xander Clark in goals. A back three this afternoon of Toby Civic. It's Toby Civic, at Kai Rowles and Stephen Kingsley. Across the middle, Nat Atkinson, Aidan Denham, Benny Beningamy, Kenneth Vargas and Alex Cochran. Up top, Alan Forrest, partners Lauren. Shankland, the subs for the Jam Tarts Gordon, Grant, Oda, Devlin, Tate, Fraser, Tagawa, McClucky, and Lem Bikisa. Your match referee here today at gloriously sunny Dingwall. It's Grant Irvin and John Beaton is on VAR. What a day we have in store in the Scottish Premiership And as always, that only tells part of the story Because the title race in the Championship The title race across the divisions actually uh, Getting to an important period in the season So, so much to look forward to But now that you're up to speed with the team news We will be back with a recap of the week's biggest talking points next The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West this is Clyde One Super Scoreboard Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Evans in the studio The top team round the grounds as we build up to an exciting Saturday In the Scottish Premiership and beyond Saturday 3 o'clock The way football should be for many lots of good games to look forward to We've given you team news already So at this stage on a Saturday we tend to look back on some of the week's biggest talking points And I suppose an obvious one Roger Hanna The week that Rangers and Scottish football's interest In European competition this season Came to an end Yeah, um, it's a strange thing to say Gordon I'm not too sure Rangers will be too annoyed by it You could tell that by the final whistle On Thursday evening at Ibrox There were no jeers or boos Or any criticism of Rangers I think the Rangers support realised The team had done well to reach the last 16 of the competition. They competed well against a very expensively assembled Benfica side, including two World Cup winners in Otamendi and De Maria. And they were looking a little bit tired, jaded. I think Philip Clermont would happily get three points at Dens Park tomorrow and then put the majority of his players into cold storage for a couple of weeks because it looks as if they need a rest. It looks as if they need to reset, recharge the batteries for a run-in to what could still be a domestic treble for Rangers. Is that the way you see it, Fraser Wishart? There has to be a level of disappointment when you lose a football match and when you go out of a competition, but I've not detected too much anger about the full thing. Well, certainly not for the Rangers supporters. You know, I, th- I think Rangers... You know, they gave everything the other night, but we, we talked about the, the first leg last week on the show and, and I was certainly of opinion that uh, it was a chance missed and that uh, Benfica was still very much in the game and so, so it turned out they didn't really pressure uh, Benfica enough for it in and around the goal. They had plenty of the ball and plenty of ball outside the box but uh, couldn't get past Otamendi, who was, who was terrific as, as always. But um, I, I don't think it's ever good to get knocked out of a competition like that, especially when you think longer term. We always talk about coefficients and we know that's been well publicised, but we, we dropped to something like 15th or 16th at the start of next season when the, when the coefficient. So we need a really good season from all our teams next year. I, I agree with Roger, I thought Rangers looked a bit jaded. And by all accounts, people who were at the, the game against Motherwell last weekend, it was much the same. And there's not really been any great rotation of the squad that, that happens nowadays, going back to the well, to the, the same players, and there's not really the same attacking options uh, in, in, in the squad as there, as there could be, given the fact there's been so many injuries, so yeah, I think a real disappointment for, for Rangers it was there for them to win, and Cyril Dessel said as much in the media uh, uh, yesterday, you know, I think there's a real disappointment around the squad, it was there over the two legs but uh, I, th- I think you couldn't argue with Benfica over the 90 minutes during the week, uh, I think they deserved that but it's really disappointing for Rangers and disappointing for Scottish football, I'm sure. Yeah, as part of a wider point, Roger, as Fraser just mentions, we now know that the coefficient sits in such a predicament that if Victoria Pilsen get as much as a draw in either leg against Fiorentina in the Conference League, that would mean Scotland loses its automatic Champions League place for the season after next. So um, that's more of a wider one rather than a direct reflection on Rangers during the week. 
Yeah, and I don't think the, the coefficient problem should be laid at Rangers' door. I think of any team, they've probably held up the coefficient with their run to the final in Seville a couple of years ago in the performance reaching the last 16. This season, it's, you know, I'm down here at Kilmarnock St Mirren this afternoon, and one of these teams is likely to be in Europe next season. It's, just, it's kind of other teams that haven't really held up their end of the bargain over the years and, and boosting the coefficient. You know, so often uh, Scottish teams go into Europe in July and come back out of Europe in July, if you like. So, uh, you know, a few of those teams next season you would like to think Hearts would punch above their weight you would like to think that either Kelly or St Mirren would get a couple of results and punch above their weight that Celtic would have maybe more wins and more coefficient points than they've had in the Champions League in the last couple of seasons so it's a it's a collective effort we need to get this coefficient up because uh, it would be good for Scottish football as Fraser said It's the modern way David Field we never used to pay much attention to these things or maybe I just didn't hear them publicised as much as we do now but we, we sort of all know where we sit and what needs to be done to try and, and keep that fight going. And, and Gordon, it's so important from a sporting sense in terms of, you know, you want big European games, it's great for us, it's great for fans, it's great for everybody, but also financially. It's so important with the right good run, you know, the automatic Champions League place and getting, you know, the third place for the Scottish Cup winner into one of the other tournaments as well. But yeah, as Roger's saying, look, it's a collective effort. Rangers have done really well to boost the points recently, but the other teams really need to, to step up. You know, you don't want that fourth or fifth team going in and, and losing, who was it, Kilmarnock lost a few years ago, Connors Keys, Nomads and things like that. You know, we need to really get get the collective points total up um, because it is very precarious, but I think we're all going to be a few Tina fans later this month. They used to have a fake Fiorentina strip when I was 10 year old So Bat I'll try and think on the back. Um, Mijatovic ah. on the back Oh I good free yeah. kick taker Oh no no, no that was Mijatovic, Mijatovic. Yeah, Mijatovic was the guy that scored in the Champions League but final anyway, <laughs> That was a proper left turn at this point in the show We can get to that nonsense later um, I suppose specifically though Gordon When we talk about you know disappointment And levels of disappointment mm. I don't see many Rangers fans Throwing the toys out the pram I don't think Philippe Clement will be distraught about you know the the overall impact of it, but having seen the two legs, that's where the frustration comes. Was there much between the sides? Did Rangers defend really, really softly for the goal? That's the bit that will be the maybe the sort of what if that that will still hang over. Yeah, as much as the Rangers fans will just say, look, we need to concentrate in league business. There's still a domestic treble there for up for grabs. I thought it was disappointing, Gorn. I thought the uh, the tie was there, especially the effort and the result they got in Lisbon. Uh, coming to Ibrox Thursday night, you're thinking, yet yeah, packed uh, Ibrox with the crowd behind them, they'll go on and win this because Benfica didn't really impress too much uh, over there. But I've got to say, I thought Rangers were really disappointing. Whether I was down to some players being a bit leggy, um, I don't know but I don't think they tested the goalkeeper enough they didn't create enough chances um, I was saying on Thursday night in the programme who would you have given man a match and a caller come on and says well John Suter so if you're looking at centre half in your man a match in a game that you're going to try and win to get into the next round it shows you that other parts of the team were just not up to it and I weren't think, working I think the disappointment is tempered by two things number one Philippe Clement is a terrific manager but he's not a medical worker and Rangers were never going to win that competition so long as there's breath in Jurgen Klopp and Xabi Alonso's bodies otherwise Rangers can also look forward to the potential treble they're the only team who can get the treble and that's why today's game at Celtic Park is so important one false move by Celtic and they're in deep deep trouble Rangers have that potential and after this weekend is out of the way the Rangers players can get that two week break can rest up and come back a stronger proposition they've got to get Dens out of the way tomorrow but the Rangers fans they have lived in Celtic shadow for years and years (laughs) one title out of 12 has been theirs and they have lived in Celtic shadow and I think the Emergence from Celtic shadow Is what most Rangers fans crave Above all else The notion of Focusing on domestic football Or getting more injuries in Europe Roger we went round and round on that In the build up to the game And lots of examples were used About on the Europa League final run From a couple of seasons ago Yes Rangers didn't win the league But it was probably nothing to do with that They actually looked quite fit They looked quite strong Of course the examples of any time our teams tend to make a European final in recent years, they don't win the league. But 
Is there a feeling that Maybe because of how stretched This Rangers squad is Looking at the moment That that They, they will sort of not not need the rest, but you know benefit from not having to go on all fronts. Yeah, and they'll definitely benefit from a couple of weeks off after the trip to Dens tomorrow. And you know they, they've got a hectic fixture schedule anyway. You throw in they're still in the Scottish Cup, of course, there's that semi final against Hearts at Hamden to come up, as well as the stresses and strains of a title chase. If you were to throw in two games against Marseille, as Benfica got in the draw, and then potentially. Another two games in a semi-final against a Liverpool or an Atalanta. That might just have been the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of the treble hopes. So Europe's gone. They've done well to get to the last 16. They'll now focus on Dens tomorrow and then they'll get a break. There is to be a tiredness factor though, Fraser. You would imagine that this is the one. As Roger says, there's a, there is a break coming up and if there's no European football thereafter, that takes it out the equation. Can't be taken out the equation for this weekend though. No, I think there'll be a couple of changes. I mean, Diamandi looked a wee bit heavy legged during the whole game. Never mind at the goal um, d- during the week as well. So a young player who is playing at a really high level, maybe for the first or highest level he's played up for the first time in his career. So maybe Raskin will come back in. There's Cantwell and a few others to to perhaps go and get a, get a starting place. But uh, if, if they're not up for it tomorrow, Dundee are a decent team. I've seen Dundee a number of times this year, and and if you've not got energy. Tony Docker has got them with playing with real energy in the midfield. Cameron and uh, McCowan are really busy on the ball, but they get around people as well and they're creative. And Bakayoko, he backs them up. They've got two strikers who will knock into the, the, the Suter and Goldson. So if you're not up for a, a battle, not for a physical battle first and foremost, and a, and a, then, then you're going to find yourself in trouble. So, uh, you know, you just look at the team selections, the Benfica two Benfica ties and the Motherwell tie there's hardly a change in there and usually in the Motherwell game in between the two ties there would be a few changes but that's not happened so you might see a few changes tomorrow but uh, yeah one you can see one last effort before they get a rest but some of them will be away on international duty as, as well so you know you don't win titles by, by not getting, being up for games and uh, they're going to have to be up for it tomorrow Dundee will give them a test Brilliant exchange just on Twitter that amused me I shouldn't be a, I shouldn't be surprised at much on there but it's because it's nine Seconds apart There's not a lot of love for you Birthday boy Well it's a bit split not nine, a lot. nine seconds apart Where TN72 says Going to tell DL He has no clue about Rangers and the fans And to keep it shut And then nine seconds later Danny says Gordon DL is the only pundit To tell it as it is I'm going to go out on a limb here And say that maybe Just maybe I like Danny People are people are just <laughs> looking at things Through the lens of their own team yeah. maybe, maybe that's what's happening here Nine yeah. seconds apart The same comment taken two ways I didn't say anything oh, bad against Rangers Who knows People hear what they yeah. want to hear Don't they um, Let's hear you Danny let's, um, <laughs> let's keep that going Just for a minute or two more Before we get back to Today's football I mean David Do you I don't know We, we Like I said to the previous guys We go round and round on it Does the impact of European football Have a have a, a knock-on effect for a title race for you? Yeah, it does. Gordon, listen, it's more games. It's more games at a very, very high level. And when you've got a squad as stretched as Rangers is right now, then of course it's going to have an impact. I think it was a missed opportunity. I think Benfica were there for the taking. As much as they were really good individually, I didn't feel they were a great unit. And I think Rangers, if they had the same you know, front foot intensity that they showed in Lisbon, I think they could have got a result. I don't think it's the end of the world for Philip Clement. I think he would probably rather be in Europe than out it, but yeah, I do think it probably will help them in terms of just softening the load a little bit for domestic games, and I think tomorrow as well, I think it's a huge game for Rangers and a really, really tough one too. I actually felt before Hibs imploded last week at Easter Road that Rangers looked a bit leggy, so this is going to require another really, really big effort, and I think it's just one at all costs tomorrow for Rangers. Okay, let's leave that there then, because we've got big fish to fry this afternoon, huge games across the country, not only in the Premiership, but we will go back around the grounds next. And now a word from our podcast sponsor Lookers Motor Group They've got Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms Across Glasgow and the West So you can find the new or used approved car That's right for you The Land Rover showrooms can be found in Motherwell, Darnley And the north of Glasgow With their Jaguar and Volvo showroom found in Hillington And right now at lookers.co.uk You can browse and shop 24-7 Value your part exchange Order and take delivery from the comfort of your own home Every approved used Jaguar, Land Rover or Volvo comes with a minimum of 12 months warranty, roadside assistance, MOT test warranty, an independent mileage and service history check, software updates and lots more. Check out lookers.co.uk to get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today. Now back to the podcast. Have you heard the energy price cap is changing? 
I still don't really know what it is or what it actually means for my bills. I can't keep up with it all. Does it drive you mad? No, mate. I'm with Scottish Gas, so I'm already beating the price cap. I'll get the drinks in. Don't worry, you don't have to know everything about the energy price cap. Because at Scottish Gas, we're keeping our prices below the April cap with our fixed price tariff. And if we release an even better fixed tariff in the future, you can switch for free. Search Scottish Gas Tariffs. Eligibility and T's and C's apply. Your future, full of possibilities, like travelling the world or welcoming a new member to the family. Unlock your potential with an investment portfolio managed by Nutmeg, built with your financial goals in mind, with access to free financial guidance whenever you need it. Make the most of your ISA allowance by the 5th of April before it resets. Invest in your future today. Search Nutmeg ISA. Capital at risk. Tax treatment depends on your individual circumstances and may be subject to change. The winning team, all season long. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Building up to kick off in the three o'clock games, we've already given you team news. We'll go back around the grounds in the not too distant future. Let's hear from Brendan Rogers, ahead of Celtic against St Johnson. Yeah, a very competitive team that we will have to work really, really hard to, to break down. As I said, the game earlier in the season at home, we, we could have scored a hatful of goals but didn't, and that was you know, partly our finish, but also partly their courage and their organisation and their will to keep the ball out of the net. Obviously, the the, the second game, we were nowhere near the, the speed and tempo what I would expect from us in the first half. And then second half, we uh, we brought the game to the level that I would expect and we come off with a really good second half performance. So so we will need to do the same again. That's the, it's the time of the season now where you cannot waste 45 minutes or 60 minutes in the game And in the other dugout of course Craig Levine We've basically been finding every match is pretty tough at the moment and I think other teams are finding exactly the same and, uh, obviously there's interest in the title race and uh, you know, it's a proper scrap by the looks of things between the, the two Glasgow teams but our concerns are, are very much St Johnston and trying to pick up some points in, in Glasgow I think most of our rivals will be looking and thinking St Johnston will struggle to get anything from the in the game, I would like very much to prove them wrong. We understand that it's uh, quite a task, but we played well against them here last time we played them. We had a chance at 2-1 to equalise and, and get back in the game, and I thought we played particularly well that day. And I'm hopeful that we can put on a good performance, which will then lead to us having a chance of winning the game. So we'll go back to the back to Celtic Park before kick off. Let's go back to Fir Park for Motherwell against Aberdeen. Uh, Fraser Wisher, if you look to your left, just you'll see over the top of the stand, you'll see Gordon Diel's flat. If you look straight ahead, you'll see his old primary school. Uh, but I'm more interested, is there any sign of any mystery man sitting watching who might be becoming the new Aberdeen manager? Is he keeping his head down, whoever he is? No, I mean, I'll let you know later on once they come out of the, the posh, out into the posh sheets, out of the boardroom, etc. But uh, no, there's not too many people in the posh sheets in front of me yet. And uh, you do wonder, because we were talking last week about it, you know, saying they were way down the line of getting a new manager in. Was was that the truth? Or was it just the fact that Neil Warnock's gazumped him by just saying, hey, listen, I'm off. See you later. Bye. You know, what a disastrous appointment he, he's been all round, you know, and really has left a huge gap in this, uh, in this squad. And uh, when you get Hugh telling us about... Uh, the stats being if they lose today, they'll be the worst run ever. I mean, ever is a big word, especially in a, a long history like a, a club like Aberdeen who've been in this top division for so, so long. So this, this is a real big game, I, I think, for them. You know, to, to get the three points for the two-week winter, uh, sorry, international break before they play Ross County would be so, so important. Even a draw, I think Peter Levin would take, take a draw right now. But uh, if they lose it, then it's a long time to sit and stew and worry and wonder, especially if Ross County pick up something. Um, at, at home to, to Hearts today so yeah a big a big game and you look at the squad and you think they've got good players you know Leighton Clarkson's been, been outstanding since he came up here as well Jim McGrath proven he's now an international player proven at this at this level you know got Junior Hoyle has played a good level in England Miofsky I don't think you can point the finger at him he's a, a terrific season Connor Barron Graham Shinney top players so they need to turn it on today but this will be a real difficult one there's been goals in these games this game at they were on it for Park, it was 4-2 to Aberdeen, of course it was 3-3 with Aberdeen being 3 down after half an hour, only a number of weeks ago as well. So I, I think there'll be goals, both teams have got a threat, but both teams have got a frailty at, at the back. But uh, it's going to be a really interesting 90 minutes. The first goal will be vital and how the game started. If Muddle get on top of Aberdeen and get the first goal, you can only fear the worst for the Dons. Yeah, let's switch to Rugby Park for Kilmarnock against St Mirren. I don't like to always just 
Bang on about crowd numbers Roger Hanna But it does feel like The number of visiting fans Heading down from St Mirren Is a really good telltale sign Of just how, how big a game this is And how well both teams are doing Yeah I was actually speaking To Stephen Robinson about it Yesterday morning Gordon Stephen Robinson Started pulling together This group of players The home crowds at St Mirren Were only about 4,000 Now he's taking 2,500 To away games Down the M77 To take on Kilmarnock And that shows that you know, the, to, to, to pinch a word, Derek McInnes actually used when describing St Mirren through the week. They've got an identity, and the, the St Mirren supporters, uh, they, they feel a bond with the team again that like they haven't done for, for many a year. They get the first top six finish last season, the highest league position, I think it was since about 1985 or 86. Um, they could even eclipse that this season. Uh, if they get a draw today, they stay in fourth place. They stay in pole position for that European qualification. And it's a terrific job that Stephen Robinson has done with them. Well, let's hear from him. It's for them to dream of Europe. The fact that we're taking potentially close to 2,500 people away from home just shows what a group of boys we've got in terms of the, the quality that they're showing on the pitch. And, you know, hopefully we can, we can send them home very happy. We're in very good form going into this game. What's happened previously... I think they, people said to me about not winning at Hibs. We've won twice since that's been said. And there's lots of firsts. So if we haven't beaten Kilmarnock since I've been here, then hopefully that'll be a first. And Derek McInnes disappointed, I'm sure, to go out of the Scottish Cup last week. But back to league business today. One thing is now we can just really focus on the, the league. We've got nine games. They were always a kind of yardstick for us this season. We knew that if we could replicate a wee bit of what St Mun did last season in terms of their points tally, then that probably would get us into top six. And that's where we're sitting roughly now, so just got to go and try and finish the job. So that's you up to speed for Kilmarnock against St Mirren and Motherwell. Aberdeen not done yet, of course, because his, Hibbs Livy has an interesting look about it. Mostly because everyone expects us to finish 2 all. David Field Hibbs, just the absolute specialists in that scoreline. Yeah, it would be the 10th to each of the season, Gordon, an amazing start. But I think there's going to be goals here, I genuinely do. David Martindale, they had a go at Celtic last week, and I think they're going to have a go today. He's got a front three in Stephen Bradley, Teddy Yenge, Joel Nibley. I'm just actually watching Brian Rice take a full-scale, almost attacking training session. It's very odd, you don't really see that, but they're going, they're just, make, poor Michael McGovern in goals is getting shots battered at him. And I think Livy are going to have a real go. In terms of Hibs, they're doing a sort of, in a pre-match huddle ritual just now, with Nick Montgomery in the middle of it. Listen, a draw's no good for either team. They need to go and win it. Livingston badly need points. Hibs, if they don't go into the top six today, there's going to be serious questions asked of Nick Montgomery and his players. So I think this will be an entertaining one. I thought maybe they were preparing Michael McGovern for an onslaught at the other end but I forgot Shamal George in goal today rather than Michael McGovern so there we are maybe Livy are uh, going to have a go certainly looking forward to that one let's hear from Nick Montgomery It's easy to look back on the negatives and um, the positives are I think we're the only team that's gone five games unbeaten in the league the last five league games and the two games we drew um, yeah, you can say that we dropped two points I'm really proud of the boys' effort and, and performances and, and the run that we've been on and now we have to carry that momentum on into this game before uh, an, another international break And it was Brian Rice on media duties for Livy this week Nick, Nick Kamani was playing a 4-4-2 and things weren't really going his way as much as he expected I don't think and and he's changed but Hibs have got good players they're a big club and they've got good players and they've got a really good attacking strengths but Hibs are always Hibs you know you're going east of the road you know, you're going to have to go there, you know, put up a fight, you're going to have to defend at times. But I think Livingston has got quite a good record there in recent years. Now, Ross County's priority is winning today to try and move up. Hearts' priority is winning to try and move closer to securing third. But I wonder about the subplot, Dave Galloway. This was the week that one of the final squads before the Euros was named. Lauren Shankland will be wanting to keep his goal-scoring run-up to try and start these friendlies, try and make sure he's in there. And what an interesting situation it is with the Hearts goalkeepers. But Xander Clark continues in goal today. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, uh, Lawrence Shankland will be uh, very confident. You know how confident an individual he is. He'll be confident, as he, as he will be for every single game he plays, of going out and um, finding the back of the net. Um, 
got to praise Ross County. Great spirit shown by them here in midweek with hearts bound Jan Danda. There's an irony, scoring an equaliser with the last kick of the ball against Hibbs, talking about subplots. Uh, and another match just three days later. That's exactly what they need, isn't it? Um, it'll be interesting to see how Danda performs against the team he'll join in the summer. Hearts, as you've touched upon, coasting towards third place, but I'm sure Stephen Naismith will demand they keep their foot on the gas. They want to maintain momentum and get as many points as possible. And, of course, there's a Scottish Cup semi-final coming up next month, not to mention the Euros, which we've just spoken about. The Jam Tarts, incidentally, they actually have a, an excellent record against today's host. 14 matches unbeaten against them. All in all, games between these two teams here at this stadium, they tend to be very close, either a draw or just one goal in it. So the same again wouldn't be a big surprise. I tell you what, Mark, he's one of your favourites, Jan Danda. Forget how he plays. What sort of receptions are you going to get from the Hearts fans? Oh, he's going he's to get already a great one. ingratiating himself by scoring dramatic goals against Hibs during the week. So you, you can just stroll around, take the applause from the Hearts fans, and go and join of them course, next season. And well deserved because he has been one of the most positive signs for Ross County this season. And well, will it be too bothered if Ross County go down, knowing fine well where he is going? Top player. The Hearts fans will be lucky to have them next year. But there is a bit of that, Gordon. We mentioned Shankland and, and Clark. Mm. You know, it's it's going to be a real interesting end to the season for a few Scotland players. There will be nailed on players for sure. Mm. Um, but there's a real intrigue about the goalkeeping scenarios under Clark stays in. It's an interesting one. Um, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, Craig Gordon is a terrific goalkeeper, very experienced. But Sander Clark's been in an excellent form. Uh, right now, he's a number one goalkeeper. Steve Clark's just keeping everybody happy. I think he's doing it the right way. He's got four goalkeepers there. Good quality, bit of experience as well. Um, but it'll be interesting once he has to make that final decision. If Xander Clark's still holding the number one position, then if it's a toss-up between Xander Clark and Craig Gordon, you would think he's got to go for Xander Clark. Let's leave it there because showtime is almost upon us. You have had the team news and... The build-up from Hibs Levy, Motherwell, Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, St Mirren and Ross County Hearts. You've heard from some of the managers involved as well and that means the next thing to do is get back there for kick-off. A huge afternoon, a huge part of the season coming up and we go back to Celtic Park next. The fastest goals, the expert opinions. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Saturday 3 o'clock kickoffs are just about to take place Big games everywhere you look In every corner of the country At every part of every division But of course our focus is on the Premiership in general And particularly right now The title race The chance for Celtic to go top before Rangers play tomorrow So let's go back there ahead of kickoff Celtic against St Johnston Andrew McLean yeah, the team's just making their way out the tunnel at the moment. Celtic Park filling up nicely. And over in the north curve, there is an Irish-themed display for St. Patrick's Day, which is, of course, this weekend. Brendan Rodgers asked yesterday about the importance of getting that win and going top of the table for today at least. But he played it down, emphasising, as he has a lot recently, that he feels there are plenty of games left in this season and possibly still twists and turns to come before the end of the campaign. They need to make sure that today isn't one of them, though they of course drew against St. Johnson here earlier on in the season and struggled a bit away from home, especially in that 45 minutes at the start of the game, but came away with all three points at the end. But at home to ninth place in the table in a title fight, these are the types of games that you need to come away with three points. You'd expect those St. Johnson will be here to frustrate. They've switched to a back five this time out, but you know, they've shown this season and other teams have shown that it is possible to frustrate Celtic here, but you need to have a threat at the other end as well. Adama Sidibe is the one that's going to provide that. He does have a lot of pace, but what a journey for him when you look at it. He was playing in the seventh tier of English football in the first half of this season with Warrington Rylands, and now he's leading the line for St Johnston at Celtic Park. For the teams, it's two changes for Celtic. Liam Scales injured, he drops out. Cameron Carter Vickers is back in the starting lineup. Adam Ida drops to the bench and it's Kyogo in for him. Joe Hart in goal, the back four, Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter Vickers, Stephen Welsh and Greg Taylor. The midfield three, Tomoki Iwata, Matt O'Reilly and Paolo Bernardo, Nicholas Kuhn and Dyson Maeda either side of Kyogo. The substitutes being Lagerbielka, Ida, Home, O, Vata, Kelly, Forrest 
and Ralston. Three changes for Craig Levine coming into this. Clark, Jayasimi and Kim Pioka out. In come Considine, Carey and Sidibe. So it's Dimitar Mitov in goal for them today. The back five, David Keltons, Ryan McGowan, Liam Gordon, Andy Considine and Luke Robinson. The midfield three, Sven Sprangler, Dan Phillips and Graham Carey. Matt Smith playing off Adama Sidibe up top. The substitutes, Richards, Gallagher, May, Clark, Kuchariavi, Kempioka, Franchak and Smith. The referee, Ewan Anderson, the VAR is Chris Graham. I think there is a feeling amongst the Celtic supporters that they're looking forward to just getting through this game because then towards the end of the international break they'll be hoping that some key players will be returning. Callum McGregor will be assessed ahead of that game against Livingston after the international break. Rio Hitati back in training as well. He'll be hoping that he can make a big impact in the final stages of the campaign as well. But Brendan Rodgers has said he's frustrated with the way the injury situation has gone, but having Cameron Carter Vickers back in the starting lineup, that'll surely give the 60,000 Celtic fans in here a lot of confidence that they can have a much better defensive display than they've had. There's been so much chopping and changing, hasn't there, in that back four? There's been injuries to Alistair Johnson, there's been injuries to Greg Taylor, but the most telling one has been that injury to Cameron Carter Vickers. Celtic do not look the same team at the back when he is injured. He's on the pitch today, and not only that, he's wearing the captain's armband as well in the absence of Callum McGregor we are just about to get underway here at Celtic Park Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy interested in a career in pharmacy apply today to join their team Right, come on then, you hopeless tipsters. What is the Saturday charitable ACA looking like this afternoon? Take it away. Home wins Celtic, Motherwell, Kilmarnock, and Hibbs. Away win Hearts at Ross County. Okay, I'll go Celtic, draw with Motherwell, Aberdeen, draw at Rugby Park, Hibbs to beat Livy, Hearts to beat Ross County. Celtic, Motherwell Aberdeen draw, Kilmarnock to beat St Mirren, Hibs and Levy, this is my nap, draw, and Hearts. Well, let's see what this afternoon has in store, let's see if any of them can get even close, who will be celebrating, who will be angry come the end of the afternoon. The first goal in Scotland came before Celtic Park had even kicked off, it's Bonnie Rig Rose 1, Clyde 0 at League 2 so that's a very very prompt start in that one very bad start for Ian McCall uh, rock bottom of the division but more and more looking like Clyde will play the Lowland League winner in the playoff well it's going to be East Kilbride isn't it a matter of time in fact can it take place today yeah yeah I think I yeah. Yeah. read that earlier yeah. I think it can or this weekend certainly uh, East Kilbride about to wrap up that Lowland League taking on uh, bonus, I think it is today So keep a wee eye there Well that'll be good for them To get it over the line It was always good I, I think I won a, I think I won my First league title In March Early March It was It was good Left a long period of the season No just to Just to Do nothing really Apart from working your fitness For next season Gordon's right we, I think I've said before We won the league We played hearts I think the following game We lost at a time castle And Gordon Strachan Went off and won Made us do the bleep test twice in a week Told us our fitness was nowhere near the standard that was required Even though we'd just won the league <laughs> Two weeks before So we is spent that, Is that the old Sir Alex Ferguson type? You know, what's the famous one? He berated his players after winning a cup or the something cup, Yeah, and it then publicly apologised the following day <laughs> uh, <laughs> You can hardly call Sir Alex old school Because he's the greatest manager ever To have come from this country But uh, th- there was a slightly more hands-on And I mean that literally uh, Style of management back in the day um, How's this for an introduction to the afternoon Junior Hoylett 43 seconds gone And he dives and gets booked I thought you guys say he gets sent off <laughs> yeah. Stay in your feet a bit longer than yeah. that. Not, that, yeah. not that you can do it after 15 minutes But I mean Yeah I Maybe think once it, the game gets a bit desperate You know uh, How, how uh, is he uh, feeling though? He's just been brought to Aberdeen to work again with Neil Warnock <laughs> And yeah. he's lasted what two weeks in his company And Neil's away and yeah. That characterises the, the, the seriousness of the day I think for Aberdeen Because the, these players must know And Peter Levin went off his head with them midweek When they lost to Dundee They must know this club is flirting with disaster Aberdeen have never in their history Been relegated And at the moment they are slipping 
towards the relegation playoffs and for a club of Aberdeen size that is a disgrace but you're in trouble for a reason for what it's worth I think Aberdeen fans are liking what they're seeing of him yeah right? yeah, by and large mm. and he's had hoping. a good career speaking of Neil Warnock I think we all thought you know that was his time up at Aberdeen he was away off back down south yeah. I was at a Scotland schoolboy. game it was you I said this 18s. last night yeah. last night I said in the show somebody told me they saw him <laughs> and I couldn't remember who well, it was I didn't see him it was the Take person I was sitting next to um, Paul Di Giacomo um, now that Kilmarnock him? he went down to the bathroom and he came back up and he says <laughs> Neil Warnock's down there doing uh, what? Ah, just taking in the just game taking in the game I think he was and seen, honestly Dougie Emery uh, he said he was chatting away to Dougie Emery well so. he's got the holiday house in Dunoon doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, oh, of course right. Right. Yeah. he's been a brick in couple or something he's, he's got, got a brick yeah, yeah, yeah he's a big Morton shop, yeah uh, Sort yeah. of, yeah, yeah. He's he's a a yeah he he, he, like we said, he goes to. He's been at Capital a few times. Ah, um, right, he's okay. got the holiday he's house in Dunoon and so on. But Aberdeen right. have to be careful that this doesn't turn into a farce. You know, they they issued the statement about the the managerial job being at an advanced stage. No, it was not. Uh, and now they have to do two things. They have to make sure that they conduct their business without it descending into farce, and they also have to pick the right. Guy. All the early goals are down the league's Edinburgh City nil, Alloa 1, Luke Donnelly, Spartans nil, Dumbarton 1, Ryan Blair. Nothing really doing from Celtic Park yet. I'll keep you up to speed. Lawrence Shanklin turning shot edge of the box for Hearts and Dingwall, but nothing else. We await the first goal in the Premiership. The lower leagues are delivering. Inverness struggling nil, Air United 1. Uh, so... That's a place that Ayr never did too well when Gordon Diel went up there. Um, but they've shaken that off. Right, Hugh, before we get any further, okay. let's do it. First half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online. Let me just hold that because I think whilst we've got an early goal, we should really make the most of it. Goal flashes. With M&D Green Pharmacy Hibs 1, Livingston 0 It's the first goal in the Premiership And a man who has had a mixed week Shall we say, Jordan Obita He mm. was very much in the mix yeah. uh, In the game against Rangers in the Cup But it was a good move from Hibs And, and a, a tapping in the end So 1-0 to Hibs A lovely effort from Majowski An angled chip It goes just wide Kelly was beaten But the first goal comes for Hibs Obita Topical one this Excluding Jack Butland No Jack Butland in the answer Can you name the last five Rangers number ones Quite simple Take away Butland Who were the last five Rangers goalkeepers before him As all of us are no, no 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 Word that more carefully Number one ones. Number ones Number ones. Ones. Is a very important part uh, of the question Yes So oh. the last five number ones They had to As the title suggests They had to wear number one uh, on the back of their jersey So let's hear it At Clyde SSB Okay At Clyde SSB It's a race by the way So get going Get going Sounds like it might be a bit of an endurance test for Celtic St Johnston 5 across the back At Celtic earlier this season They got a nil-nil draw It's all very well for Brendan Rodgers saying part of that was down to Celtic missing chances If you miss chances that's your fault should really be used to that, shouldn't they? Mm. Teams going there and, and making well, Dundee, it difficult. Dundee went there a couple of weeks ago, five across the back, and I watched that. I thought this is going to be one of these days because Dundee have got players that can hurt you the other side on the counter attack. And Celtic were absolutely magnificent that night. So they know how to play against a five, but it's about their own performance. How quickly yeah. they moved the ball. That I think night. if they get a quick goal today, Mark, I think they'll run out comfortable winners. Yeah. I don't know why, but I've just got something that they're going to win comfortably. Well, it's been a quiet start, not much doing. Here's David Friel. Oh, do oh, you know who's not? He's not yeah. having a quiet day whatsoever. I was going to say something, Hibs. something else about David Friel, but come on. Goal flashes with M and D Green Pharmacy. Hibs are not hanging about. Hibs now two 0 up. My leader. With the goal And something tells me Davy Martindale won't be taking this well No uh, that, that Sounds like the game's over now uh, well, I'll well, just well, set well. up the two Just set up the two <laughs> Customary two all draw for No him. but sometimes it, You just have Those days where 
you're getting nothing out of this and that, that would seem to be Davy Martindale's lot today I feel like my nap draw is going <laughs> in the wrong direction <laughs> what my does l- nap mean again? Did we we spoke about this before but I've forgotten it means that that's your nap nap yeah I don't know what I don't it know means. what it's short for Sunshine I've no idea um, best, I don't know what <laughs> Best bet of the day <laughs> Don't call me Sunshine <laughs> The I word can't. itself Is derived from the card game Napoleon Quite simply That's A it. nap bet Is someone's Some... best bet of the day And one yeah. you should follow There you go <sighs> Yeah hey, Okay Yeah well, Good information oh, Great that you knew that Off the top of your head Look what happened to Napoleon though <laughs> Speaking of useless facts How's this For one from David Friel So we are coming up this will make you feel old, by the way. Mm-hmm. To the twentieth anniversary of David Marshall's clean sheet in the New Camp. Really? Wow. Remember? Wow! Twentieth yeah. anniversary. Oh. Who was the subkeeper that day, that night? <sighs> what year is that? So oh, twenty. Right, that's 14. a good question. Right. The sub goalie. Why I'm might Why might I be asking Michael you that? Michael McGovern. Today? No, it wasn't McGovern. No. Yes. Was it Michael McGovern? Michael McGovern. So they're reunited today as Hibs take on Livingston with a combined age of seventy-eight. Wow. There we go. We've mm. eventually found two players here. If we add them together, that they're older than you. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah. That does make you feel old. <laughs> I mean, you still think uh, Marsh is just a. You know, well, a running the mill middle aged player. Of course he's nice. He's, he's come to the, the right. end of his career as is Michael McGovern. Wow. There you go. Yeah. So you'll sleep well tonight, won't you? Oh right. well, listen, I can't wait to go home, get into my bed. Uh, oh listen, you'll not be going home. Uh, great what's part. the what's the big birthday plan? Come on. I'm, the I'm, nation awaits sixty two. I'm You've heading, had a wee haircut. I'm heading up to meet Prince William in St Andrews for Are you a, actually going to St Andrews? Yes, I'm going to St Andrews tonight. Oh, this is the Caravan Club. Uh, and every woman, every man, <laughs> join a caravan of love. That'll be you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you see that van a rocking, don't go knocking. You see a rock wee birthday night out in the caravan in St Andrews, are you? Yeah, I'm getting down. Good I'm on getting, you. getting down to see some locals. So if anybody's heading up that way, please look shut up. the door, look me up. He's uh, obviously taking it. Look at that haircut. That is a fresh way, yeah. trim. Uh, serious. Uh, well, do you know something? I actually, there's a story behind this as usual. I went in the shop. I was walking by a shop. Uh, obviously, it's a barber's. Right. And I've seen a friend that I've not seen for about 30 years. So I goes in, had a chat, and they said to me, you need a wee tidy up. It's your birthday tomorrow. I sat in the chair, lovely wee haircut, cup of coffee. Free of charge. I was going to say, how much you pay for that? N- uh, no, I think. Honestly, it's that that is a fresh haircut. I must it's admit, looking good, isn't looking it? the part. So yeah. the big sixty-two, sixty-two celebration. It's caravan St Andrews <sighs> tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for you. I'm excited myself. Be great. I can't, can't wait, wait to hear. I can't wait. I'll the tell tables. you. What. Any golf involved? Golf so, tomorrow. Right. Get the, the buggies. Everything's oh, booked. Obviously, with this guy. Yeah. Great. Caravan of love, unbelievable. Mm, now, you, now you've got to tell me, is that Paul Heaton who sang that there? Uh, that I actually was. don't know. Aye, down here. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was. Now, he actually called me yesterday <laughs> and said, No, Gordon DL, and I wonder what you think of this, you, Mark Wilson, Hugh Keevans, and the public, because it's his birthday and he's going to St Andrews. He's asked to leave early. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can you believe that? Uh-huh. The barefaced what, is, he, is he walking there? When you were in school You get away at lunchtime yeah, Or you exactly. get the day off He's actually asked To leave early I, I wrote Gordon he a must letter must be in a rush Why? I'm, What's I'm, happening I'm, tonight? <laughs> there, there's a lot of busy are plans you, Are you two on board with that? Because it means a hard no, shift No I'm leaving two. early hold on, hold on Hold on You did say to me on Thursday Look Why don't you just leave early? We can handle five no, o'clock no. Yeah. Hugh you're on your own well, well, you know, so. As the only five community tax Pair in the building here uh, You know I He's bringing money into the Fife economy, so he can go early. If you give me your keys, I can get in and tidy up a little bit for you. Here's here's, here's here's the deal, then. Here's the deal. You know when they used to say, like, right, I need a good good 60 minutes out of you. If that's all you've got in the tank, good 60 minutes out of you. And um, you can can come off. (laughs) We will let you go early, but your performance from now until then (sighs) needs to be top. Right? Don't get... I don't want you getting distracted... You know, getting daydreaming about what you're going to be doing tonight. I want no. you head in the game. Well, the head's on the game. Don't you worry about that. At least a nine out of ten from you from now until five o'clock. You can leave at five o'clock. Oh, fantastic! I'm, I'm so Listen. glad. I, I'm so glad I've got the permission. Hold on a second. 
He's already tipped Hibbs and Libby for a draw yeah, And they're uh, two down Libby after seven minutes Yeah but, but they'll just hold them At off, five she's... to five Mark Wilson and Hugh Evans can vote to see <laughs> You can't leave if a your radio show If your performance good enough <laughs> When you're a main part <laughs> of that pe- show There's people listening to this show going Tell me to leave at four o'clock no, Never mind five we're fed up listening to him But no I'm here to five I'm a true professional Well no, we'll see Your performance until then Has to be good Well I tell you right. what You better get Big Ross going there To stand and block that door At five o'clock Because I'll be out here Well listen Boom. Before before we knock it on the head Producer Michael Has got your birthday oh, cake oh, Look at I looks like my head Don't say we're not good to you oh, Happy birthday Thank you very from much From me On behalf of your adoring listeners I'm absolutely <laughs> sure a nice big well, football yeah. birthday cake for you. No chocolate involved because I know oh, Hugh Evans doesn't like chocolate. And no you left ex- the price on the card. And no expense. How many pens? How miserable are you no, guys? But, no, but listen, the cake cost a little <laughs> quid. The cake was extortionate. Oh, that's a nice. It's cake. not even a candle in that, but that's a nice. Yeah, well, we can. Yeah, I get it. Get it. Look at that held up there. Hold up the birthday card oh, and the cake, and we'll get a wee picture there for we you. Go, thank you. Uh, yeah, I like to enjoy in his face. The, turn the yeah. Asda smart price card round a bit so we can see it. Thank yeah, you very much. Got that. Yeah, twenty eight. Um, I'm so go- happy. I was <laughs> going to get you a candle, but I'm reliably informed that that will cause issues for this studio. If uh, we yeah. Have a candle in oh, here, listen, so the thoughts here, yeah. absolutely brilliant. That's for us all. We're just still square Gordon so up for that, it. Get that. Cake no, no, I appreciate. I appreciate it from Gordon. Absolutely, you never put anything towards I'll, that. I'll, I'll, and you're, you've Gordon. got a big birthday coming up and you'll I see cannot that. wait to see what you get me <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, It's going to be yeah. brilliant You better take half of that <laughs> Put it in the fridge Anyway Hibs are keeping their side of the bargain They've started fast They're contributing to the afternoon Because they're 2-0 up already Against Livingston But the rest of you Need to hurry up and do something Quite a subdued start Between Celtic and St Johnston And not much to tell you about elsewhere Either Ross County Hearts Kelly St Mirren Motherwell, Aberdeen, all goalless. As I said to you, Celtic Park will be an endurance test. Celtic, the the fans will also have to play their part because St Johnston have come with the intention of not being too adventurous and making sure, if they can, that they leave with a point. And Mark, like, there is no way I'm going all Hugh Keevens because there's only about 15 minutes gone. There is a long, long way to go in this. But maybe some fans would have expected a, a bit more of a ch- even even a chance, a bit more of a sign of intent inside those first fifteen minutes. Oh, of course, it's crucial. Um, particularly when you're at this stage of the season, there has been criticism on you. The fans quickly into a game think we've seen this story before this season, you know, and this is going to be one of these long afternoons. But if you go and you score early, then everybody's relaxed, everybody enjoys it. It's not been that way. Not many chances created so far. But I always thought it was going to be like this. I did think it was going to be a tough, a tough watch, maybe. But it doesn't matter if you come out of it with three points. It does not matter come the end of the season. So those players need to get that in their head. Sometimes you just need to grind out a, a, a result yeah. at home. Celtic dominating the ball, obviously, as you'd expect. St Johnston are trying to go long for Sadibe on the break. There was one a few moments ago where he. Um, there was another ball over the top Sorry that Carter Vickers did really well And just saw it out Showed how strong he was But Sadibi did get a bit of change out of The American on the last attack But nothing really to tell you about Aberdeen are the better team at Fir Park Motherwell can't really get hold of the ball um, Not managing to get any sustained possession there So whoever the new Aberdeen manager will be Surely he's watching did, on did, somewhere Did Fraser give us any hint of him sitting in the the porch mm. seats as Fraser calls them No sign Nowadays someone will be Logged in somewhere I mean the Keeping interesting thing it. for me Chance how... sorry Quick chance Motherwell It was a loose ball Fell to Casey Six yards out Great block uh, By Gartman And then a Welsh ball At Celtic Park Over the top Finds Nicholas Cooney Took it down in the box But a good recovery From Robinson Direct it towards Mitov How many people are on this Aberdeen list For interview? You know, that's the intriguing thing. And they don't want that situation where you go for... I mean, already Michael O'Neill has distanced himself from it. He doesn't want the job. You don't want that kind of thing to build up where people start saying, no, I'm not interested. Uh, And then you have the makings of a farce in your hands. So I hope they know who they want and how quickly they can get them because it's their public image that's... At stake here It's a bit of shambles Hugh you've got to say Yeah of course I've got, I've got, uh, Listen I've got to hand it to you You called it last Saturday I thought after Neil Warnock Said his goodbyes I, th- I was looking at 
this game today at Fir Park thinking well they're coming under a new manager I yeah, thought it was done because and Neil Warnock said it though you know it's not like mm. people I, I don't think you can even accuse people of wrongly jumping to that conclusion if somebody says they're well down the line like, with yeah. a new manager yeah I think I think more's going to come out with Neil Warnock um, I was listening to a friend of his speaking and said when the time's right he's got to come out and probably tell us more information why he left because you don't he, he got off to a disastrous start and the fans turned against him right away but his best result against a Kilmarnock team that everybody fancied into a semi-final and then you walk away so there's more to that let me just say that now Celtic corner looking to make something happen inside the opening period of the game it's not that early anymore we're 20 minutes yeah, we're, in. we're approaching the sort of Midway point of the half See if anything can come of this St Johnson will be satisfied With their efforts so far Well the, the story of Celtic season uh, Has been an inability to Be dangerous enough In the, the, the final third of the park And the, you know there's been so much talk About the middle of the park The loss of McGregor is huge for Celtic O'Reilly has definitely shaded uh, But you can't hang everything on O'Reilly you know, he's got Paolo Bernardo there who, if Celtic want to buy him, is reputedly worth £6 million. Uh, although I'd dispute mm-hmm. that figure. Uh, and uh, you've got uh, Tomoki Iwata. They're, they're just not, at the moment, threatening enough. They're an unconvincing team. You're not having the £6 million pound Oh, price not tag. at all. No. No, you'd, be, you'd be mad to pay that. Yeah, well, there was a couple of weeks, though. There was a couple of weeks oh, spell was, where the Celtic mm. fans were saying, this, this guy's... Yeah, but he had a purple patch and then he's back. I still, think, I, th- I still think he's got good ability, Hugh. But Would I'm, you pay I'm, six? No, no, I've got to say that. I'm, I'm with you in that. I don't think I'd be uh, coughing up £6 uh, million pound for him. Hamilton Aki's one up on Sterling Albion. Kevin O'Hara with the goal. Uh, Nicky Devlin is going to be forced off for Aberdeen a head knock he was caught by Bevis Mugabe's boot and he comes off Jack Milne is going to come on for Aberdeen so forced into a change they're not ideal Nicky Devlin who of course started his youth career anyway at Fir Park not a happy return there for him he's had a tough old season hasn't he Nicky Devlin just not the races couple of high profile mistakes within that Neil Warnock period yeah they started pretty Bethlehem. well didn't they yeah uh, oh we've got one of these and it's in the big game down in Ayrshire which way is it gone goal flashes with m and Green Pharmacy Kilmarnock nil St Mirren 1 and Richard Dunn Richard Dunn Charles Dunn slams it home from a corner totally deserved says Roger Hanna Killy couldn't clear the ball and it's 1-0 to the Saints Richard Dunn only scored own goals As I remember yeah. it At, at Man City yeah. 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 Charles I mean, Dunn Well I'll tell you what That's good news for that big travelling support uh, Terrific to take 2,500 down to Ayrshire You're obsessed I'll, I'll, I, Yeah I, I just I'm obsessed I, I, Mark I just think it, it shows you that If we can get the, the product right There are people out there who want to come and watch it And it's brilliant for St Mern uh, There was times that their home ground they couldn't get two and a half thousand in never mind in an away game so so far so good they uh, must have thought Aberdeen must have thought about Stephen Robinson you'd have to think yeah I don't think St Mirren are in a, in a hurry to, to let him go but no. uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a good thought uh, because he's doing a terrific job still a bit to go there because we know Kilmarnock are certainly a threat especially at home wow oh. goal flashes with m and Green Pharmacy Hibs 3, Livingston 0 Adam LaFondra makes it 3 Before we've even reached the quarter point of the game Hibs are flying Livy are in turmoil in this one It's 3-0 to Nick Montgomery's side How's your draw looking now, Dazzler? It's not looking good, mate No No, I, I, I tell you what Livy can shut up shop now Oh yeah You know what I mean They're Forget gone. it yeah, they're yeah. gone. They're Great gone. response from Hibs though from midweek The disappointment Nick Montgomery had a few frustrating weeks where his post-match press conferences, you know, have told us as much, blaming officials, but he has to look at his team in the period he's he's been in charge and defensively weak. But I think we've all said that going forward they'll cause anybody problems, and today it's all clicking the right time for them. It's an absolute doing for Livingston Hibs three 0 up. Got a goal at Fir Park. Goal flashes. With m and Green Pharmacy And it's a goal for Aberdeen It's Leighton Clarkson We said Aberdeen had the most of the ball In the opening exchanges Miofsky hit the post But Leighton Clarkson makes no mistake And whoever that Aberdeen 
new manager may be If he is watching on We'll be pleased with what he's seen so far Clarkson volleys in the rebound And it's Motherwell nil. Aberdeen 1 Well that'll set their minds at ease For a while anyway uh, You know the, the, To lose Nicky Devlin With injury You think oh, This day is going as well as the rest of the season But Goal from Clarkson Got something to hold on to now uh, And it Could be a turning of the corner on here they don't mind playing at Fur Park, do they? Aberdeen. It was a 4-2, but with enough 4-0 up that night. And mm. remember the 3 mm. all at but Audrey, Audrey as well. Audrey, Audrey, yeah. Yeah. Ah, of up. course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Still, Still plenty of time to go and plenty of goals there, so I wouldn't be too concerned, but they can't lose an hour one, Motherwell. I told you, there's a doomsday bit of you that's built in when you've watched Motherwell over the years that if Aberdeen, yeah. shh, they're going to win at some point. Miofsky will score at some point. And that's kind of the way um, it may be felt going into this one, but there's still time, as Gordon says. Uh, Sven Sprangler injured. He's going to come off. There was an awkward collision with Maeda. He tried to play on. Looks like a bit of a sore one in the knee. And Max Kucharavi is going to come on for St Johnston, but still no score there. And no real hint of a chance, which is perhaps the most surprising. No, there's a bit of grumbling going on. Uh, this was not what Brendan Rodgers wanted or needed. Uh, he was looking for some intensity to his game and uh, looking for chances to be created and the Celtic crowd anxious because any points dropped today that you, you, you began to think did this team have it in them at all uh, and if, if Rangers can uh, regroup after Benfica and win at Dens you know Celtic simply cannot contemplate leaving anything behind today they must get all three points even if it's scruffy again yeah, still a long way to go, but no, no, neither goalkeeper not really doing anything at the moment. Don't know if this stat surprises you or not. The first time this season, Hibs have scored three in a league game. Wow. Yeah, mm. that does surprise me. When we chat about their attacking options, who they've got and how open they play. Yeah, I would have thought that they would have uh, done that more than once. Remind us of your teaser, please, Hugh. Okay, excluding Jack Butland. Can you name the last five Rangers number ones? The, the, the clue is you have to get the guys who wore number one on the back of their jersey. Yes, indeed. Let's do wrong answers to try and help you along the way. Matondo has gone for Scott Gallagher. Wow. A former nope. schoolmate of mine. No. Nope. Uh, Derek FM has gone for Lionel Letizzi. No. Nope. Mm, a few people going for Letizzi, actually. Uh, Wee Scooch wants to throw Steve Simonson into the mix No Lorne Malvo wants to go Andy Firth No nope. Robbie McCrory No nope. Okay get your guesses Keep going uh, There's Celtic's best chance VAR's checking a possible handball actually So maybe we have a big moment The ball was bouncing around in the box It was Celtic's corner Carter Vickers' shot was blocked on the line Near the line certainly and now VAR is going to have a look for a possible handball, uh, which, as we know, has been causing absolute chaos. Well, it's a penalty kick. Recently. Are you of that opinion now, since oh, it hits your hand? Uh, no, no, it hits yeah. your hand. Well, well, hold on. We, we you, are do, good. you don't know if it's at his hand. Yeah, I know what you've got to say, because you can look <laughs> back at the St. Man Ross County one penalty No, 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 I wasn't going to say that. You don't know if it's hit his hand at all. I'm not talking about the interpretation bit. All might right. just have hit him in the chest, for all we know at this stage. Mm. Um, but they're certainly going to have a look. It might have been Paolo Bernardo, actually, uh, with the final shot. Uh, no, play on. So there we go. No penalty there. Well, we haven't seen it, so we can't comment any further. Uh, that's the decision, and that's what Celtic will have to get on with. You wouldn't have any confidence anyway. Any Celtic player scoring for twelve <laughs> oh, yards at the minute? Oh, who would take it today then? Oh, uh, O'Reilly. Uh, see, see on that, O'Reilly yeah. takes every other set piece apart from the one for twelve yards. No, but usually there are others ahead of him. But he does not playing. Palmer's not playing mm. Hatati's not playing Turbull's away McGregor's not playing So would it be him or him but or uh, my, my point is If you're trusting A corner taker A free kick taker To put it on the money Where you work on For your players to go in Different pressure isn't it Just go and Put it on the money And put it in the, the top Did you corner. take many penalties Mark? That was a penalty I told you this I was a penalty Come taker on. For Dundee United Oh, in my first no, no but Dundee United's different You're playing in front Of about three people Dun right no, But no. when you were with Celtic because uh, that's a different no, pressure No, no, no I had probably 25 players in front of me <laughs> At that time we, get, we got to the penalty shootout Against Spartak Moscow And oh. they were down to 10 men And that's when 
You had to then Because we had 11 Penalty shit out we had to four foot a man and <laughs> was Gordon, you? And Gordon <laughs> 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 hey, hey. Gordon came up to me just in front of the tunnel I'll never forget it we were all grouting and I'm thinking I wonder you what penalty I'll be boy. on and he says you'll need to set this out and I said what do you mean because I didn't know that was the rule and he says because you've got ten so we've right. chosen you but hold on a minute how, do you, go, how do you go from being an actual penalty taker for Dundee United to not even being allowed to take part <laughs> in a shootout You know what, my, my pride was dented Even though there was so much on the line that night And I was thinking Oh That's, yeah, That is a yeah. wee bit yeah. I was thinking, he's clearly not seen my Dundee United days But I did miss a couple for Dundee United So maybe he did, I don't know Who, who was your centre-half saying that was in Gary, front I think Gary Caldwell So, let me, get, so let me get this straight You were, is this the oh No, you weren't playing in that game were you? Which, Spartak, <laughs> Moscow, 2007 yeah, yeah, right. So seven, all of these players were In front of them Chosen to take penalties instead of you Gary Caldwell Aye, fair enough. he put it in the top corner Stephen McManus did he take one? No, but I'm saying they Aye. all played. So. Hold on a minute, Gordon. Does the goalkeeper count that as well? Of course he does, doesn't he? Yeah. So the goalkeeper was in front of you. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good was point. was the goalkeeper. Boric. But he scored a cracker, didn't he, against uh, Dundee? Aye, at Hamden. Lee really. Naylor. Although he yeah. had been replaced by Darren O'Dea by this point. So Darren O'Dea. He was ahead of me as well. <laughs> Nakamura, right. No one's going to grumble there. Scott Brown. Donati. Derek Riordan. Oh. Zoravsky. Oh. Vinegar of Hessel and Gia. I'd have all of them in front of you as well, actually. Seriously? Yeah. But you'd have Darn Day and Steve McManus. Uh, uh, maybe not those two, actually. I would have kept that. I'd have kept that. that, that was, was a bit leggy. Darn Day scored with a penalty in a cup final. Against who? Rangers. No, it wasn't a penalty. No, no, no. Header. It was header. Aidan McGee scored the penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Because yeah. I think the anniversary was yesterday or something, aye, and I saw aye. it. Uh, right, Kyogo's goes through one on one, but it's on the angle. A bit of pressure put on by the defender. He tries to dink me to, uh, but it goes over the bar. And now Carter Vickers heads over the bar. So this is better from Celtic. They're still not coming that close, um, but certainly more than they've offered. There's a big goal in the Championship. Mark Wilson's employer, Partick Ooh, Thistle, one good, up good, against good, Morton. Good. Yeah, that's and a big game. Of well, course, they need result, don't they? of course, it is Brian Graham. A big week for him next week. He takes the women's team into their first ever cup final as well on Sunday uh, against Rangers. Yep, at, at Tyne Castle. I'm delighted for Brian because he works hard at that, really hard at that, as well as being the captain and training every day. It's a lot of time and effort and his role, uh, and he's got his rewards with the cup final, but he's still doing the business on the pitch, you know, and they've been distracted at all, and that could be an important goal because Morton right in their tail. How's, how's my uh, team doing, Wraith? Are they winning? Because they could go top of the Hamden. league after that yeah. slip up last night with Dundee United. But that would require Wraith to go and show that they can take advantage. Um, because how many times it seems like none of them want to kick on and win that league, but that was a real. There's a lot of rage out there from Dundee United fans. They just don't have a me, do they? Who, Wraith? Uh, By the way, I, I, I seen them on Tuesday night. I've got to say, I was, although they won the game, I was disappointed with them because they've got good players and I hear a lot about Wraith and the way they go forward, but. You did a job and again, so yeah. high, high. They just sat deep and then took their opportunity with a set piece and got the three points. So effective, like I was saying about Celtic, at this end of the season, I suppose it's not about performances, it's about points and just getting over the line. I watched the film last night. They were superb. The Watters now had a shot blocked on the line. Sorry, Hugh. Uh, the third goal was a, a thing of beauty. Uh, and you have to wonder, if Dundee United are making such a hard job of getting out of that division... It would be an even harder job to stay in the division up above that one. Need to get there first. There's a real yeah. pressure on now. There certainly is. And you just wonder how you know that works mentally. When you're going into a stretch, Wraith, everybody feeling good about themselves when you compare it to last season where they were to now. You know, you're just riding on a crest, a wave, and you're just ticking the games off whether United the pressure becomes heavier on your shoulders. I you think know. they play Wraith in a couple of weeks, Mark. So if Wraith could go and get a result today and put that little bit of a gap and then that big game comes around and they win it, then the United are in trouble. There was a good chance for Motherwell a few moments ago. It was Sam Nicholson into the starting eleven today. Left footed shot, but a good save from Kelarus. St Mirren are bossing the game at Kilmarnock. They're a goal up thanks to Charles Dunn and now Caelan Boyd Munce. Who called up by Northern Ireland this week? He's fired wide from 25 yards. You know, you can say what you like about Kilmarnock, but they, 
this Aberdeen team who are in crisis and who have been having a terrible time of it, they beat Coman convincingly in the cup. You know, so uh, is it any great surprise that Coman are not winning? Well, the, I, the surprising thing about Kilmarnock was the well, who's that, Kelly? Um, Manny there. Uh, Roger. Roger. Aye, Roger said they went, they went with a three today. So a lot of their successes came through a back four. But I suppose Derek's got the personnel he can chop and change, but going pretty attacking in the wide areas. So I thought they were going to go for St Mirren today, but it's, it's not working at all for them. Yeah, anyway. the birthday boys firing away at this. Oh, he's half teaser. Teaser. Yeah. Yeah. Is he doing okay? Let's go again, Hugh. Excluding Jack Butland. Can you name the last five Rangers number ones? The last five to have worn the number one on their jersey. I think those wrong answers we did are, are helping. I think they're starting to edge people in the right direction. Um, another one, Lionel Charbonnier. No. Well, I was going to guess mm. him. No, no, he no. wore number 14, I think. Uh, I just made that up just I, I was going to say How yeah. do people remember That kind of I, thing I, I know, I just There is no up. goalie I, In the history of goalies yeah. Wore number 14 I, I know people were Already One on their phones Googling that So I thought Don't waste your time <laughs> Are we Are we Peter one shot wants to throw Andy Gorham in No Right okay Keep those guesses Coming they, in Thank you Come That's on, selection you. there Take, take yeah. him off Goal Kyogo But the flag goes oh. up Ooh. Of course they'll check it As we've seen you see goal stand then get ruled out. You see flags go up before or after. We do have a goal at Fur Park though. Goal flashes with M and D Green Pharmacy. And it's Lennon Miller equalises for Motherwell. Motherwell one, Aberdeen one, having such an impressive season, especially for his age. And I think that might be the first league goal well. out of the campaign. Drama and crisis back on then. Uh, he might be allowed in the first team dressing room Monday <laughs> if he gets another one. <laughs> Is I mean, it not changing in there no, yet? No, no. Is it not? Still oh, in the youth team I dressing like room. That. I like that. Do you that. like that? Is it not too long now? No. no. Well, how long has he been in? This well, season. This season yeah. No, no, I like that. See it the full season and then it's an actual progression. You've merited moving up. Okay. I like that. Rather, young players get too much too soon now. I'm oh, convinced of that. I'm corner. convinced. You'd have been the first to moan. If no, 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 no. I, I did my time. I'd done the United as well. I shot now over at Celtic. It was offside that Kyogo goal. I don't know if it will be making Lennon Miller's highlights real. The shot seems to have hit three players on its <laughs> way into the net. Oh no! Now there's a VAR check, so maybe the goal won't stand. It's going to be checked for a handball uh, by a Motherwell player. And of course, if that was the last uh, touch, then there's no there's no tolerance if you like any. Yeah, because it's well. It seems to have gone down as like an Angus McDonald own goal in other quarters as well. Um, so there's going to be a bit of drama one way or the other here. Mm. Well, every Aberdeen player will have his fingers crossed because you know you don't want Motherwell equaliser on the verge of half time, and the drama goes on. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking at your face here, Gordon. Is it? A oh, I don't know yet. No. I don't know. Mm. But we'll wait and see. Um, still checking it, yeah, still checking, which is everybody's least favourite bit. Of course, on one hand, you want to try and, if it's the right decision and all that, then fair enough. You look at, you know, Rangers the other night, it's, oh, Willie Collum's going to the screen here. So chances, I mean, we've seen it, referees will sometimes now. And Willie Collum has done it this season. He's it, gone and stuck by his own decision. But chances are... Um, this will be overturned and the goal won't be given uh, to Motherwell. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, there's Kyogo shot deflected over the bar by a sliding Liam Gordon. So Celtic definitely finishing the half stronger. Yeah, they'll, they be, a bit, they'll be a bit disappointed of no score, uh, obviously, because you want to go off to a quick start. But this, by the sounds of it, listen to what Andrew's saying there that. They're chapping at the door. I don't think it'll be far away. I, I, I thought it'd be a comfortable win this afternoon. I've got to say, I thought Celtic would have been on the front foot. I think the return of Cameron Carter-Vickers is a big, big plus for him at the back. No goal, Motherwell was a handball <sighs> according to Willie Collum. So it remains Motherwell nil, Aberdeen 1. I think there's going to be drama there all day. Mm. It's got the feel of something that, that, that will ebb and flow. Uh, although Mother will have had that one disallowed, they are not out of it. Who's there, Fraser? Well, big save meet of there to deny Tomoki Iwata on the half volley. 
Celtic giving it much more of a go now but can't find the back of the net no, Wata's had a couple of efforts now um, Kyogo um, potential handball that was you know not given so they are knocking at the door but is it going to be one of those days you know the quicker it approaches half time again the Celtic fans must be thinking we've seen this time and because time again of, I, I know what you're saying Mark because of the importance of the game and everything they can't and Q's right they can't afford to drop any points today I think if you know we're, we're not even at half time okay if it even goes in nil nil at half time I would imagine Celtic and the games now go another five, six, seven minutes at the end of the game. I'd imagine Celtic when they get the first important goal they'll go on and win it. Um, well, well, they have had a lot more chances now towards the end of this half but still no breakthrough. The only team that's having a skoosh of an afternoon is Hibs 3-0 up at home to Livingston. Motherwell a goal down. Thought they'd scored there but a goal down at home to Aberdeen. Kilmarnock a goal down at home to St Mirren. And nothing Ross County Hearts We do though Have a goal At Celtic Park Eventually Goal flashes With M&D Green Pharmacy Goal Celtic Goal Kyogo A header from the Japanese striker A cross by Nicholas Kuhn And we assume This one will stand But you never know In this wacky old game But anyway As we believe it to be At the moment It's Celtic 1 St Johnston 0 A Kyogo header Well I said it At the start The they have them in the right order now Kyogo on the park Ida on the bench uh, he, he looked sharp against Libby when he came on and scored tucked his goal away in typical Kyogo Furahashi fashion uh, and he's already had one disallowed by VAR today but assuming this one stands he's making the difference yeah, he's playing right in the edge yeah right in the shoulder had a chance earlier on he should have maybe done better way the one that he's Put in the back of the net and then the goal. Yeah. Goal flashes with M and D oh. Green Pharmacy. Checking that Celtic goal for offside now, oh. so maybe not. Uh, but it's two 0 St Mirren. It's another corner from the left. Man drawn at the back post and well deserved. St Mirren really on top here. Kilmarnock fans will not be impressed. St Mirren make it two, and they have deserved it. Those two and a half thousand in the away end, absolutely loving it. I will. Uh, a well-spent trip for them so far. Right, let's wait and see then what happens with this offside check at Celtic Park. Uh, but quickly, what a performance so far. Well, incredible from Stephen Robinson because, you know, a lot of podits have went Kilmarnock's way this season, rightly so, because they've had the headline results against Rangers and Celtic. And Derek McInnes got a lot of praise for that. But Stephen Robinson just keep ticking away and that puts a wee bit of daylight if that stays the same today. A great performance going down there because we've all seen how hard Kelly are to beat. Oh, fair play to them. At Celtic Park, the VAR check is complete and the goal is given. Celtic 1, St Johnston 0. Yeah, that's it, the, the breakthrough. Um, you had to be patient. And I imagine Celtic to go on and add to that in the second half. Well, St Johnston have the, the age old dilemma now. What do we do? I think they, I think they stick with the same tactic here because yeah. if they go two down, there's no way back. Well, it's one, you know, a set play, a uh, counter attack. So I don't think uh, Craig Levine will change his tactics at this moment in time. Does he oh. change him much for any game? Uh, he's got. I think he'll get to a certain stage. Uh, if it's one nil, with about fifteen to go. He's got to try and be a little bit braver to try and get. Something. St Johnson are one of the teams I watch against Celtic, Dundee, anybody. Play the same. Goal flashes. With M&D Green Pharmacy Ross County 1 Hearts 0 It's Simon Murray From a tight angle And the Staggies Lead the Jambos Which puts the pressure On Aberdeen uh, Because The wrong sequence Of results for Aberdeen Is a Ross County win And Aberdeen loss Which puts Aberdeen Second bottom So They are a goal up At Motherwell They have to be mindful Of the fact that In Dingwall Ross County are a goal up as well It's bad news for probably Livingston Because there's just a gap opening oh, up yeah, to yeah. You and, uh, you can see Livingston relegated obviously um, Not doing very well at Easter Road So um, Ross County and Aberdeen making a fight And putting a bit of pressure on St Johnston It looks like this Motherwell disallowed goal Will be another one for the What on earth is going on with handball Discourse It's a Blair Spittle corner Theo Bears like tussling with a defender so as you do your arms are sort of mm -hmm. out as you tussles the ball uh, seems to sort of clip his arm on the way down but it then goes out the ball kind of falls to, to 
Lennon Miller He then hits a shot It's deflected into the back of the net But it comes back And is ruled out For the The fatal bear handball So uh, I, 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 The confusion yeah. goes on I think I just don't think That football was meant to be like this I don't think football was Meant to look like this This is a uh, Hopeless You're not happy here are you VAR Is Not good for football Mm. Mm. Oh, no, listen, I understand what you're saying um, But how do you tidy that up? How do you It's so rough around the edges at the minute Well, I think I started saying this earlier You see the obvious examples Europa League, last 16 Massive game, huge consequences Benfica get that goal ruled out the other night VAR, VAR's there and it stands And it has yeah. to stand yeah. Now, v- this is the difference, of course VAR versus the subjectivity of handballs And stuff like that seems to be well, will be where the main confusion's coming in, but is there some sort of happy medium somewhere? Yeah, yeah. So technology again, it's it, it's not an issue. Technology, the cameras, the amount of finance you put behind it, obviously makes it better and clearer. But it's who's making the decisions, who's yeah. interpreting what the laws yeah. of the game are now. And think- again, I'm not. I I can't be a hypocrite here because just because it's Motherwell involved, mm. I don't think you necessarily have to take into account how players react because. You know, they, they might not see it or whatever that's the point but it is it's another classic one of these like literally nobody's got any idea that Theo Bear handballed it there is not one arm you know goes up mm. he's just he's just tussling he's just jumping for a header if, if it even does hit his arm it's slight yeah. it, it, like it doesn't so it doesn't change the direction of the ball or anything the ball keeps going the way it does falls to Lennon Miller he hits it takes a few deflections and goes in so as Hugh says Whether it was it ever meant For that level of No but the, the officials Who are now sitting In front of the monitor um, At Clydesdale House Are now terrified To not give that Because The backlash Fans Social media Slowing things down Ah look at this It was a handball How could this goal stand When Everybody knows Things like that Should just be allowed to go And make the game More enjoyable Because the game's about goals The game's about entertaining And about creating chances And scoring goals and everything now is just about how can we rule things out in case there's a backlash on us. And that's a sad state of affairs to be in. And I don't know how it will change. That's my point. Our interpretation of VAR in Scotland appears to be, how can we disallow this goal? Hmm. Yeah, but I think Gordon's right. I think there's some big decisions, especially offside ones that get 100% right. I'm not, I'm not a great lover of it either, Hugh. I think it's sort of a ruined their game a little bit I'd yeah. hate to play in the modern day game and obviously with the many goals I scored and then you're waiting for a celebration and you're thinking will I celebrate will I not double celebration yeah, double yeah. celebrate I've been knackered you'd have to make a celebration for when you scored and then a yeah, post VR exactly. celebration yeah I used to do that I'd do Just that one that one <laughs> <laughs> for, for all those that I, was either if it was a goal or disallowed yeah. same celebration <laughs> there we go have that that, that celebration fits both you oh aye 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 one arm over the other you have thought that one out yeah um but it's the bit that you know the bit that would frustrate the players a lot and we can there have been a few different examples um like i think iwata falls kind of into that category mark or certainly the one the game midweek uh at dens park wasn't it Aberdeen, yeah, yeah. Dundee, Aberdeen. again a- anything i've ever been told about it or was told at the start of the season was that there is supposed to at least be a bit of allowance made for because we talk about natural position if you and Gordon DL and myself and Hugh, which would be quite something, are all jostling for a ball in the box and it's a cross and it's a set piece, chances are yeah. your arm might be straight out on Gordon's back. It might be, you know, and, and he might be holding you. And when the ball drops down in that scenario, is that is that really is it really a handball offence when that happens? But they seem to be getting given a lot, whether it's in an attacking box or a defending. Anyway, no doubt about the result at Easter Road so far, David Friel. Yeah, half time, Hibs 3, Livingston now. It's a half time report, Gordon, but David Martindale must be wishing it was full time. I've never le- seen him look so disconsolate as he is right now. Hibs are 3 0 up after 22 minutes. You would back them to score even more after the break. They've been absolutely outstanding, terrific. David Martindale and some of these Livingston players are suffering from a sickness bug this week. They clearly hadn't recovered. Hibs raced into lead after three minutes. A great move ended with Adam LaFondra firing a low cross. Jordan Abita tapped in after Jamie Brandon failed, failed to clear the ball. Seven minutes, it was 2-0, another slick move. Joe Newell, he started it with a midfield burst. Played in Eli Yuan on the right. He picked out 
Mizian Mayalida and he supplied a simple finish. Livy were all over the place at the back and it was 3-0 in 22 minutes. Cadden raced forward this time, slipped another pass to Yuan and he crossed for Lafondra to get his goal. Livy with a couple of dangerous moments but Hibs look like they can score in every single attack. They're heading for the top six and Livy are heading for the drop. Half time, Hibs 3, Livingston 0. What a scoreline that is. Let's go to Dingwall, Dave Galloway. Half time, Ross County 1, uh, Hearts 0. A pre match blow for the hosts with Connor Randall dropping out, replaced by Max Sheaf in the starting lineup. And it was a, a lively opening with Lawrence Shankland looking in the mood for Hearts, turning and shooting high and wide from the edge of the box. At the other end, Sheaf shot well over from a similar distance. Then Jordan White at full stretch to reach Simon Murray's cross from the right hand side. He only put the ball over the bar from point blank distance. But the visitors started to gain the upper hand. Kenneth Fargas set up Shanklin to shoot inches over. County keeper George Wickens made a smart save to keep out Toby Sibick's volley after Stephen Kingsley's ball in. And Fargas rattled the bar with a powerful drive after Alan Forrest's effort was blocked. But on 43 minutes, the sucker punch. The Staggies went ahead. Simon Murray's shot was saved and he got the better of Sibick over the loose ball to score from a tight angle. It's been an entertaining and very feisty first half here in Dingwall. Ross County 1, Hearts 0. Uh, there was another VAR check for a Celtic goal. This one also results in no award, but still 1-0 to Celtic as we head towards the break. It is halftime at Rugby Park, Roger Hanna. It is, and it's Kilmarnock, Nil St Mirren 2, Gordon surprisingly one-sided here for two teams separated by just a single point in the push for Europe. It's been all St Mirren attacking the end, filled with 2,500 buddies down the road from Paisley. They could have been ahead after 11 minutes. Caelan Boyd months his free kick headed wide by Michael Mandron when he really should have hit the target, but they did hit the target in 20 minutes, a corner on the left-hand side. Kilmarnock couldn't get it clear from the six-yard box, and there was big Charles Dunn, an emphatic finish, slamming home his first ever St Mirren and goal for 1-0 done only in the side because James Bolton's out with a broken hand this afternoon Boyd Munts almost made it 2-0 a half hour a drive from 25 yards that flew past Will Dennis's left hand post Kilmarnock barely seen an attack but they did force a save out of the former goalkeeper Zach Hemming in 34 minutes ahead of but Marley Watkins in a flying dive away to his left to touch the ball round the corner but St Milne soon back in the front foot they thought they had a decent claim for a penalty Greg Kilty's effort looking to strike Stuart Finlay in the arm after 38 minutes there was a VAR check by Alan Muir but he told referee Ross Hardy to play on play on meant a corner for St Byrne on the left it was delivered by Greg Kelty and there was Mandron at the back post to knock it home for 2-0 and a deserved lead at that stage Watkins threatened again and added time at the end of the first half his shot was blocked by three St Mirren defenders after a good play on the right hand side by Liam Donnelly Saints haven't won here since 2013 they've never beaten Kilmarnock under Stephen Robinson it looks as if that is all about to change and they're about to put themselves in real pole position for Europe half time Kilmarnock nil St Mirren 2 half time at Fir Park Fraser Wishart yeah, half time here in Motherwell nil. Aberdeen won. Aberdeen deservedly ahead at the break. Look confident at the back. Threat up front. Have an excellent Leighton Clarkson goal to show, although they can thank VAR. The usual controversy. Steve McLean will call him disallowing a Lennon Miller goal, apparently for a Bay- Theo Bear handball in the build up, although those in the ground have absolutely no idea where or when the handball took place. Aberdeen started the game well. Hoylett was booked in 43 seconds for diving when he was set free in the box. There's a good chance he should have got a shot away. Five minutes gone. Jim McGrath, lovely pass into Peter Majorski. Really clever, skillful play by Majorski. Just lifted the ball the outside of his left foot over the goalkeeper who stood and watched as the ball drifted just wide. Little seen him mother early stages to 18 minutes before they had a, a chance or even an effort on goal. Don's failed to clear a spittle free kick. The ball fell to Dan Casey six yards out. He got his shot away. Brilliant block. Denied a goal by Stefan Garterman as the ball went over the bar. A blow for Don's in 22 minutes. Devlin had caught a boot from Bevis Mugabe. It was accidental but he was substituted with a head knock. And Leighton Clarkson then had a goal bound shot from 16 yards. It hit Casey at wide for a corner. And from that corner it was cleared back to Jimmy McGrath who set up Majowski who had shot, was fierce shot hit the post and the rebound was volleyed home by Leighton Clark's really skillful finish by the midfield player because the ball came off the post really quickly to him but he got over the ball and put the ball in the back of the net Aberdeen continued to be dangerous in the break McGrath and Clarkson excellent the first effort on target 
for Motherwell came in 31 minutes on the break. Lennon Miller switched to play to Sam Nichols. A really good first touch, good shot as well. Good block by Kellerus, who stood up to block well. But in the 38th minute, Motherwell thought they'd equalised. The corner from the right-hand side eventually fell to Lennon Miller. Not a cleanest strike with his left foot. Hit a few players into, into the back of the net. Might have been Angus McDonald that got the last touch, but the usual, where the players were ready to kick off. Willie Collin was sent by VAR to the screen and he does allowed it for handball as I said earlier I think against Theo Bear in the build up to it should have been two for Dons in 42 minutes sub Jack Milne three had a really good chance Hoyler outswinging corner the big defender had nobody near him eight yards out but poor contact and the ball went wide then Miyoski almost made it two just on the break denied by a brilliant Kelly save in stoppage time to tip the ball over as the ball headed to the top right hand corner Muller with a bit to do to get back into this game Aberdeen really good performance so far but they'll probably think they should be further ahead but at half time at Fir Park it's Motherwell nil, Aberdeen 1 and finally it's half time at Celtic Park Andrew McLean Celtic 1, St Johnson 0, the half time score not the quick start Brendan Rodgers was looking for but Celtic have grown into this one and look good value for their lead now it was a really quiet start to the game though St Johnson happy to sit in and make it tough for Celtic Celtic just unable to find that pass to break down the defence eventually they got a big chance it came from a corner Celtic looked certain to score as well fell to the feet of Cameron Carter Vickers his shot was deflected goalwards by Dyson Maeda that one was blocked Maeda's follow up effort he blasted it off of Luke Robinson he was only about six yards out it came off the St Johnson defender there was a quick check for a potential handball in that one on the goal line but no penalty given the home side started to look a bit more dangerous after that Kyogo played in over the top he dinked his shot over the bar though and then there was another blocked off the line following a corner again Tomoki Awata denied the ball was then in the net ten minutes before the break for Celtic Kyogo's close range header after a cross uh, went in but the flag went up for offside Mitov then forced into an impressive save to deny Tuboke Iwata that was a powerful strike on the half volley a goal seemed only a matter of time at this point and they got it five minutes before the break Nicholas Kuhn cutting in on his left floating a really nice ball into the middle of the box and there was Kyogo with the header to find at the bottom corner Kyogo had the net the ball in the net, net sorry again just before the break this one, the flag went up again. You'd think Celtic would be keen to add to this scoreline after hitting their stride in this game. The halftime score, Celtic 1, St Johnson 0. And we'll do a full round-up of the halftime scores next. Scottish football's league leader. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Halftime scores in the Scottish Premiership are as follows. It's been a busy old afternoon already. Celtic 1, St Johnston 0, Hibs 3, Livingston 0, Kilmarnock 0, St Mirren 2, Motherwell 0, Aberdeen 1, and Ross County 1, Hearts 0. In the Championship, it's Airdrie 2, Arbroath 1, Inverness 1, Air United 1, Partick Thistle 1, Greenock Morton 0 and Queen's Park 0, Wraith Rovers 0 In League 1, Edinburgh City 2, Alloa 1 Hamilton Ackies 1, Stirling Albion 0 Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 0 Montrose 0, Annan 1 In League 2, Bonnie Rig Rose 1, Clyde 0 4 for 0, Stenhouse Muir 1 Peterhead 1, East Fife 0 Stranraer 0, Elgin City 0 And the Spartans 2, Dumbarton 3 In the English Premier League there is only a a couple of games on at the break Burnley 1, Brentford 0 Luton 0, Forest 1 Let's round off the first half teaser as well Hugh Because we didn't do that before the break The first half teaser With the scottishsun.co.uk Slash football For the best football news and opinion online Excluding Jack Butland, the last five Rangers number ones were Alan McGregor, Wes Fodderingham, Cammy Bell, Neil Alexander and Stefan Kloss. Well done if you got it right and lots of you did. None of you as fast as the following three though. We Scooch had a couple of wrong answers but got in there in third place. Ryan Rossi in second and Craig McFarlane was the winner. Well done to you Craig. We will have a Who Am I in the second half. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Second half's about to get underway around the country. In fact, I think pretty much everywhere. Restarted Hibs, restarted Motherwell. A couple of changes um, for Motherwell. Mugabe and Nicholson off. 
Gent and Halliday on Not quite started yet at Celtic Park Andrew McLean uh, Celtic a goal to the good And VAR playing a, a key role as well Yeah Celtic just making their way out the tunnel at the moment But yeah VAR prominent in that half It was involved quite a lot Three different incidents involving Kyogo He had the ball in the net three times Only one of those counted though The offside flag going up for a header initially That one was checked by VAR and ruled out eventually and then it was an offside in the build up I think for the goal that actually counted but the assistant on this near side has actually got all of the calls correct uh, on his initial view they've just been backed up by VAR so he's having a good afternoon of it so far doesn't look as if there's going to be any changes for Celtic so far but I think that Kyogo goal did come at a good time Celtic fans may be starting to get a bit frustrated they'd seen that story already this season where they just hadn't really picked up the pace in the game, started quite slowly and Celtic really hadn't created any chances at all in the opening half of that first half, if you like, but eventually they started to pick it up, they were moving the ball quicker, they were getting the ball into the box, they were a threat from set pieces as well and then Nicholas Kuhn was the one who unlocked the door because he picked the ball up on the right wing cut in onto his left and it was a really nice floated ball into the box you've maybe got to question Dimitar Mitov because he came out tried to punch the ball but Kyogo just got in there ahead of him good attacking play and he found the bottom corner that then really ramped up the atmosphere here inside Celtic Park the fans then backing the team they were hoping that they would get that second goal as well because they looked good value for it they probably could have had two or three before the half-time whistle went, but they really have hit their stride. Brendan Rodgers wanted a quick start, didn't quite get it, but he'll have been happy with what he saw in the closing stages of that first half, and he'll be hoping that with Matt O'Reilly standing over the ball at the moment, that Celtic will pick up exactly where they left off. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. From apprenticeships to pharmacy managers, start your career with them today. Well, big 45 minutes ahead at most of our venues I think with the best will in the world It would take something special for Hibs not to win that game against Livy 3-0 up into the second half But the others, not a lot in them Motherwell 0, Aberdeen 1, Ross County 1, Hearts 0, Celtic 1, St Johnston 0 I suppose St Mirren do have the two-goal cushion at Rugby Park as well Oh, however, somebody else has got a two-goal cushion But where is it? Let's find out Goal Flashes with m and Green Pharmacy And it's Ross County Simon Ooh. Murray again A loose ball Hammered in County 2 Hearts nil Probably won't damage Hearts' bid for third too much It really shakes things up at the bottom Yeah it does uh, Motherwell now They have to be aware That if they score against Aberdeen It's trouble for the Dons Goal flashes with m and Green Pharmacy Goal Celtic And it's a reverse of the combo From the first one This time it's Kyogo With the ball across And Nicholas Kuhn Taps the ball Celtic might not have got The fast start They were looking for In the first half But certainly have After the break 2-0 Celtic Well it's one that uh, Nicholas Kuhn deserves The goal for Kyogo Is a wonderful pick out By Kuhn uh, similar to the pass That he laid on For Dyson Maida For Celtic's first goal Last weekend In the Cup uh, and now he had to build on that performance Because he got tremendous praise But praise is only worthwhile if you can do it in the game that follows And he has done He's made one, scored one Perfect day for him Yeah, confidence booster no doubt And a great start to the second half I did say at the beginning of the game I had a feeling I know that people were looking at Celtic Thinking, oh, they're going to make hard work of it The minute the first goal goes in And then obviously Brendan Rodgers Having a chat at half time, want a bit of response. Kuhn, I think, starting to really grow for me. I think he's starting to look a real top player. Um, you know, an assist today and a goal. Um, he's really coming on to a game. Kuhn, I've got to say that for him. Yes, yeah, a really good goal from Celtic's point of view as well. It's a lovely ball down the left for Kyogo. He then does well, fires it across. And it's that, um, it's that sort of quick back to front mark. You know, like, you get direct That doesn't mean that you Put the ball over the top And just chase it all the time or, or kick big high balls But Celtic Can get the ball back to front Quite quickly They did last season And they've done it again today Well if you're playing like that You need a striker That's prepared to make The run in behind And with Kyogo They've got someone That, that does that uh, And he was doing it In the first half He's done it again um, And it's a great ball Across the face Couldn't Having a good couple of weeks He's turned into Be an intriguing player for Celtic Maybe 
A lot of people quick to judge, but Brendan Rogers is interesting on it. Seeing that he lost, was it a stone in weight? He, he lost mm. as well because he's his dental problem. Yep. Yeah. Um. You think how how much that is in weight? Never mind a, a professional athlete to lose that and try to get back into your stride. So I'm maybe starting to see signs. Well, I think I think for someone who's already slight, there are a few people that could lose a stone and not really notice it. <laughs> what you looking at? No, what you looking at? The sixty two year old. You can't can look at him in his birthday like not, that. I did not see a horse. What are the horse here? pony? I, I don't like the way you're looking over my direction. No, nonsense. That is true. Nonsense. That is total uh, muscle. Nonsense. <laughs> oh, muscle with this guy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've seen me in the gym how I perform. Yeah, I did. I'd seen him. You know, you were on a, one particular machine for a not a long time. Vending. The other day. Vending. Yeah. 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 What what that? The vending. Not at all. Kit Kat Chunky. Mate, I'm ripped. <laughs> I can't believe he's calling you Kit Kat Chunky. No, <laughs> Kit- that's what he bought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel, I feel I have seen him in there lifting weights. It is disturbing. See your facials, like he's proper gives it, like just lifting the big one. I expect him to come in with one of the, you know, the belts. The belts. Mm-hmm. Aye. That's next, and I've got my gloves ordered for. Oh, don't yeah, the gloves. Yeah, That's yeah, not allowed. The black leather no, gloves. No, 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 but no, no, see no, when no. he does a set of uh, whatever eight or ten. <laughs> It comes off the machine I'm so I don't know. Look at me It's so disturbing See for anybody That doesn't know Absolutely I run about them in the gym They must think Who is this oh, Ripped Sam steel. Ripped oh, Enough of that Hugh Keevans If you are ready I am The second half teaser With the Scottish Sun.co.uk Slash football For the best football news And opinion online I have played alongside Stephen O'Donnell and Callum Wilson. I've been managed by Tony Mowbray and Paul Heckingbottom. I won Player of the Year for three consecutive years with two different clubs. Who am I? Played alongside Stephen O'Donnell and Callum Wilson. Managed by Tony Mowbray and Paul Heckingbottom. And one player of the year for three consecutive years with two different clubs. I've got that. So that'd be like the in- internal award that his club. It's not like the league's player of the year. Yeah, so it's like his club's player of the year. That's fine. Well, of course, it was this time last week that you came clean. The yeah. Big, the big reveal. All along, you have been cheating yeah. on the second half teaser. The Who yeah. Am I? Producer John has been feeding you the answers. I think. I and think... the Kit Kat Chunky every week. Yeah. And you've been cheating not only us, but the. Look, I was only cheating myself. Yeah, the, the nation, the listening public. Ah, the nation joined in, they loved it, they were really pleased for me, but I decided ah, a week before my birthday, I'm going, I am going. I think I've got that, Hugh. There you oh, go. Write it down. Okay. Well, it, what, what does this matter? Because if you do, it just yeah, means somebody's yeah, told you. No, again. no, how can somebody... Lost. I get, what is the point of cheating again? I've already said I cheated. That's what you would say, exactly. though, the old double bluff. Oh, come Wouldn't on. You? I, I, I'll tell you I can narrow I've that I've heard down. this act before You reeled his in for uh, I'm there uh, Oh I've, I've, Oh, oh I've purpose. got it before him No he didn't oh, No he didn't you. No you copied what, How can I write that down You did You did Mark had it first Yes uh, Have that To be fair I did cheat there anyway, again Anyway So it's too easy I did I got, I got it off Roscoe Did, did you, you actually Yeah <laughs> but you actually didn't know what Mark I Wilson. didn't die, got it. I bribed. 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 I you can head to the Twitter feed at Clyde SSB and that's where you tweet your answer as well. Double save Zach Hemming to deny D's and Watkins away back into this game for Kilmarnock. Well, they've scored now, Kelly. They've certainly got a chance and they've done it before this season. Especially with the front players. Kelly have got Watkins and the guys in the wide area, Kennedy, Armstrong. Very close to a third for Celtic. Matt O'Reilly's ball through for Kyogo. Hits the bar, bounces down near the goal line, not over it, and away. Well, whatever plan St Johnston came with, uh, I assume that Craig Levine knows it's uh, a goner now, so uh, St Johnston would have to come out and make things uh, a bit more attack minded from them and therefore leave spaces for Celtic. It's, it's just not always a conscious thing, no, though, is it? I, know, I was just going to say if that. You've so. got, if you've not got the ball, then how do you get it back? Especially Celtic part when Celtic are confident, dominating the game, moving players around. Yeah, you're right, Hugh, and, and, and it sounds good, but as a manager, you're looking thinking to get out, we need to get the ball first and foremost, and then we need to keep it. And they don't seem to be achieving that this afternoon. 
Yeah, so Celtic coming close to a third Trying to make this a bit more convincing But already comfortable, you would have to say, Mark Well, yeah, Brendan Rodgers, I think, will be pleased Just with that goal at the start of the second half Because it puts everybody at ease And, you know, they can go and then enjoy the game Rather than that pressure on their shoulders And he could do with a couple of games like that Um Looking at the fixtures coming up International breaks That will be away Then Ibrox And Mirren at home Before the split So three big games Another good week of growth On Dyson Maida's hair as well That's the important thing Forget all the tactical analysis Let's just check on the barnet Make sure yeah. it's coming along mm-hmm. nicely After the international break How's that going to look? Was that another two weeks Down the line? He's, yeah he's going to be A full flowing lock I Like Kyogos I've, like I've got a big video Coming out on Thursday night Excuse me? About the barnet which coming oh. out Don't 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 let it out the Don't let the cat out the hat. Is it don't let the cat out the hat. That's is not the phrase, but never mind. What, what is your phrase? Bag. Bag <laughs> You'll be pu- you'll be pulling a rabbit out the hat if you can fix that hair. I that's it. You. You've got a rabbit in the hat and cat out of the bag mixed up. Uh, yeah. Got your animals in bags and exactly. hats mixed up. Exactly. Uh, Here's your unexpected um Twitter. Or, or newspaper headline of the morning Did you see this? And it's obviously, it's got a Scottish Interest in it as well um, About Nathan Patterson Did you see this? No we didn't No did you not? Nathan Patterson Scotland International of course At Everton um, Everton stars involved in training camp row With Sean Dyche After the Toffees boss aimed a playful slap At Nathan Patterson During a meal in a Portuguese restaurant As James Tarkovsky Plays Peacemaker Mm. Well if somebody's required To play Peacemaker That means that player and manager Have obviously squared up to each other I would assume The one thing I used to hate You was a player If a manager You know tapped you in the head Or Codgy sunshine or something like that. I just yeah. feel like uh, there's a lot. Of, uh, how how playful was this slap? That's the because that you know uh, I, I'm yeah, detecting yeah. I'm detecting from the story that it wasn't that playful. No, if it's, playful. If it's, uh, they've stage. had to shoehorn that word in there, haven't they? Playful. Mm. Um, you ever had anything we've all been in team nights uh, and, if you need a uh, speech. Uh, and, and things happen. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had uh, well, these I wouldn't in a story I told them off air. Well, hurry up! I was more interested in Nathan Aye. Patterson before he kept. Oh, in, but anyway, well, carry on. out, and when you have a few alcoholic beverages, sometimes. So you're going to leave the manager your nameless? You can do that if you want. No, no, it was Lenny. No, I, we're, we're good pals now. Aye, and he, he kept calling. We were obviously well on in the evening. He was calling me Sunshine, which annoyed me. He kept calling me Sunshine just to annoy me, and it got to me. So there wasn't a fight or anything like that. Would, I just get told where to go? But you aye. just said. Please don't, please don't call me Sunshine aye, again. Aye, aye, and aye, those words. But, but um, I'm going to guess he kept calling me Sunshine. Hundred percent. How many times have we talked? Oh, I mean, loads. Just kept over and over again. But it was funny. I mean, um, you know, some of the coaches for months on end, just as Daz is doing, just kept all right, Sunshine in the morning, <laughs> and we got a good laugh at it. But these things happen. But I think then when you go to playful slap, and Sean Dyche is a big fella, isn't he? I don't think you want to take a playful slap off him. Now, I don't know if alcohol was involved at all. We don't know that. But I'm assuming. It's <laughs> that something you been. don't hear every day, is it? You know, managers walking no. by you and just giving you a wee clip. Back in the day, and you know this to be the case. Oh, you. It was open warfare. I don't know. I can't. When, when did when did Fraser Wisher sign with Rangers Reserves? When was that? Because. <laughs> I don't know if Fraser was under Jock Wallace, but mm. when Jock Wallace was there, my goodness. There are I can see more reports though claiming that Nathan Patterson was embarrassed to be in the middle of it all. So it maybe doesn't it, it, apparently it was more the other players that took offence to it. So I don't necessarily think he did. Well, you don't react have to be the, the victim yeah. to be offended by things and so, the Everton ooh, players maybe experienced one stood up for him. This is a big one. Goal flashes. With M and D Green Pharmacy, a goal back for Kilmarnock. Maybe we have game on. Ooh, Kyle Vassell. It was a bit of a scrappy goal. It was scored at the second attempt. I don't think that will bother Derek McInnes because Kelly really needed a way back into this one, and they've got it. That's a draw on the cards. Kelly have got the players to get you fancy another. Them to get back in. Well, they've came from behind before at Rugby Park. They've got a good spirit about them. As good as St Mirren have been this season, Kelly at the top end of the pitch. Can trouble any team And they've got good options On the bench That can come on And get them goals So Yeah I think uh, Rogers got a very exciting You know Second half To go down there 
Um, you're looking at Ross County. I've never thought that would be a home win, but they're doing terrific against Hearts. And then obviously Celtic and Cruz, Motherwell, they need a goal. Are Hibs going to go on and batter Livy, or is it going to be that classic 3 1 and the game just peters out? Well, when teams go on 3 0 up at the break, I think there's a subconscious relaxation of the mind. And they feel that they've done their job well, However, came close to making it four Adam Lafondra just couldn't quite connect With the free kick from Mercondes Motherwell have made a change They've taken Shane Blaney off They've moved Stephen O'Donnell into centre-back And brought on Adam Devine So perhaps just trying to get a bit of attack, attacking width from, from deeper penalty Kilmarnock Woof they could go and win it if they score Ryan Flynn on Marley Watkins Now this could be a huge moment Not only in the game uh, But in the season as well Lauren Shankland booked for diving in the box mm, Protesting his innocence I guess VAR would have a wee look Did you see him on Monday night Me and, me and Kurt Broadfoot were just playing judo For 90 minutes I Had a chuckle at that like that It's got a bad character about him, isn't it? Yeah, it Who takes line. command at Pell Armstrong? Is it Armstrong? Yeah your oh, favourite I, I like him Now Zach Hemming's injured And he's receiving treatment Before the penalty So Wait and see what eventually happens there Set your stopwatch I don't know how much of a delay We're in for Well good spirit from Kilmarnock To get the goal But then put enough pressure on Right away To get the ball back in the box Armstrong has taken the ball Off Liam Donnelly mm, You've got to score then yeah, always If you take the ball, ball You've got to score yeah. That Donnelly was never taken that, Was he? He could have, yeah. He might have just been He's recovering the ball. Yeah, Armstrong was always going to take that. But I'm, I'm with Daz, by the way. If Kelly end up well, scoring he, this penalty, Armstrong every chance he'll win it. Scored one at Ibrox just a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Yeah. Danny Armstrong. Um, so it would, would follow that he would take it. And he's actually in good goal scoring form as well. He's, he's added a couple from open play in recent weeks. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, Chris Cadden off injured. Hopefully not too serious. He's obviously had a difficult run. Difficult time of it Off he goes for Hibs But they are 3-0 up So shouldn't damage the Score line At the moment uh, It's uh, Mariah Welsh on He had quite the week as well Yep uh, Against Rangers on Sunday Yep Lunging Sent off Lunging in Yeah It's been an interesting week For Hibs Nick Montgomery I mean You look at his time here He's had a bit of everything Hasn't he Nick Montgomery and I think Hibs fans are divided. Kilmarnock penalty. Goal flashes. With M&D Green Pharmacy. Goal, Danny Armstrong. And what a game we've got on our hands now. Remember, St Mirren were 2-0 up at half-time. It's now 2 all, A four-goal thriller. And we're well on our way to a cracker. Well, it becomes an embarrassment for the 2,500 uh, St Mirren fans who were no doubt, as they say, giving it large at half-time to the, the Kilmarnock fans. And now it's 2-2 all of a sudden And Fortune favours the brave Well whatever Derek said and done uh, Tweaked to tactics a little bit Certainly paying dividends And at home 2-2 two, two, You know they're they're on the front foot now You would imagine they could go and win this Daz, He's pulled the cat out of the hat Yeah Yeah a good there's, a cat, there's a cat amongst the pigeons A good open <laughs> game at Fir Park But still Motherwell trail there Matt O'Reilly's free kick from a tight angle Tipped over by Mitov As Celtic look to add a third Well it's all over for St Johnson isn't it I mean it's a, it seems to be exclusively Celtic uh, We've had Special K Kuhn and Kyogo And they are serial scorers Special key. Oh, yeah. you, you, you must have been working that for the past. Yeah, I like it. Twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could see that coming, couldn't you? Got a million of them. Got oh, a million of them. Good. That's why you're you were at the top end of the old journalism game. <laughs> Not everyone would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because you're a serial cheater. Yeah. yeah. I beat the punt at uh, the second half teaser. I mean, um, Forrest and Kelly <laughs> coming on for Celtic. Uh, Kuhn and Bernardo going off. So a bit of a change. For the hoops Well Brendan Rodgers You know he's, He had criticism For playing Daniel Kelly And he's not Having it Not listening to it And I think he's quite right Get him on again See if he couldn't I think it's, Unless he's carrying something Perfect opportunity To play 90 minutes I mean he came off Last week didn't he And we thought he'd done His hamstring or something Because he was limping a bit So maybe There is something there But You know He doesn't Complete a lot of 90 minutes 
You know, a lot of former players now, when you look at it, don't complete a lot no. of 90 minutes just because of this five substitution rule. And then, you know, they have a bad game and people, oh, he's not up to match speed. And well, you're never going to get up to match speed if you don't mm. complete some 90 minutes in your career. Uh, right, let's do something a bit different for a Saturday afternoon, right? We don't often do this, but we've done it all week. And I wanted to try and give away some prizes. So let's play. <laughs> Yes, Clyde One is once again the official radio station of the Glasgow International Comedy Festival and all this week on Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Oh no, I'm going to have to interrupt it. I was just getting going with the comedy Monsters Inc. music as well, but this is a must. Goal flashes with m and Green Pharmacy. What a turnaround. It's oh. Kilmarnock 3, St Mirren 2, 2-0 down at the break. And Kelly have turned it around. It's Marley Watkins' header from Armstrong's cross. Those two combining again. And Derek McInnes and the Kilmarnock fans are loving this. The 2,500 St Mirren fans, not so much. Told you, the St Mirren fans will have been giving it large at half-time and now there are wow. so many eggs over so many faces, it's not true. You have imploded And like I mentioned that You've got good players at the top end of the pitch You'll create chances And it's about having someone in there to take them um, Watkins, good player I like Watkins I, that, I think they'll go on and on and actually add to that Rather than get pegged back now Brilliant, what a game What a game down there at Rugby Park right, Let's try again I don't know how many times we'll get interrupted I can ditch the music this time Right, all this week on Clyde One Super Scoreboard We've been giving tickets away to the Glasgow International Comedy Festival And we thought we would round it off today as well Not only the tickets, but we are going to throw in your dinner as well So today you can win tickets to see Some Laugh Live at the Pavilion On the 31st of March We're talking award winning Scottish comedians Mark Jennings, Stephen Buchanan, Stuart McPherson And joined on stage by none other than Greg Hempel as well So you go and see there, plenty of laughs And you get your Sunday lunch with drinks at the Duke's Umbrella So it's a great day out on us And all you have to do is give us the punchline to this football joke The word joke is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, believe me So your joke today is this Why was the chicken sent off? Okay Why was the chicken sent off? And all you have to do is call right now 0141 951 1025 Provide the punchline to the joke Why was the chicken sent off? And you can win the tickets to the comedy festival And your Sunday lunch with drinks At the Duke's Umbrella as well Call right now (laughs) And we'll see if we can give the tickets away Don't spoil it Any think you've got the joke? No I no. think That's because you're not funny What about you? I think I've got You're not funny Oh you do? No, no, Let me no. see Write it down for me Oh no right, okay. uh, What about my joke the other night I came up with Hugh got it Hugh's got it I mean you would maybe Let's spell see, it yeah. differently yeah, so, you course, could lean, yeah. so you could lean into the pun But there we go Ah no I didn't have it ah, it's very cute. Tell us what you thought it was then because you couldn't cross uh, the road. <laughs> I thought I was something to be crossing roads as well. Right, okay, let's get this straight. You, you think the joke is he couldn't cross. Why his... was the chicken sent off? Because he couldn't cross the road. Yeah, something that's not. Like that's not really a, it's not really a joke, though, uh, is it? Couldn't lay an egg. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I see what you had written down. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, yours is really not a joke, is it? Not really, no. But I, I had a go. I think that's the most important part, just taking part in it. It's a, it's a bit of taking part. It's it, taking well part, yeah. Well sometimes you I'll get stick up for you in your birthday. No, I think it was horrendous, honestly. You, well, See, you. when you go to the caravan club in St Andrews tonight, don't tell, don't them tell that. that joke. Don't try no, and impress I'll use, people with that. I'll use Hugh's punchline. <laughs> anyway, right. Oh, by the way, the phone light like, red hot. I genuinely thought, oh, it's Saturday, you know, people are not necessarily phoning, they're maybe out and about and doing their things. You should see the response. On this Right Let's bring in Because by the way Don't think this is A nailed on thing Last night The first caller through Got it wrong Ooh, And we had yeah. to move on To the next one um, But I think we do have Somebody through At the moment I can see the phone lines Absolutely Lighting up Let's bring in McGill In Uddingston The McGills are in How are you McGill? 
Aye, uh, not bad, Gordon. How's yourself? Not bad, not bad. This is very simple. If you can tell right. me the punchline, you're off to the comedy festival plus your lunch or your dinner or whatever it is. So why uh, was the... What the prize was, I just phoned in. <laughs> Super. <laughs> well, it's actually, um, it's a signed Gordon Dale coffee cup. Hope that doesn't <laughs> put you off. No, in all seriousness, it's a right. day out at the comedy festival and your lunch. So why was the chicken sent off? It's a serious foul play. Hey, yes. uh, give it a big laugh at the steps. Well done, uh, Miguel. Uh, you're off to see. Stevens who wrote that one. It was. Yeah. It was indeed. Uh, I thought it would have been nice. You're off to see some laugh live at the Pavilion on the 31st of March, and your Sunday lunch with drinks at the Duke's Umbrella. Happy with that? I do. Aye, aye, no bad. She'll be happy. It's no my cup of tea, but aye, she'll be happy. <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Miguel. Thanks very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll send her in there. All the comics send their regards yeah. when he walks into the Dukes and the girls are in. No. <laughs> that, but that reminds me of still game. Remember where no. they won the meal? No, to go oh, to right. the theatre. And he's going, I'm not up on her, she's, she's into the beetroot. <laughs> Miguel, you're not a beetroot salesman, are you? He's away. Is he's that away. his real name, Miguel? Well, it'll be his surname, obviously. What do you think it was? Miguel something oh, Smith. No, right. his surname. You've missed two of these in amongst all the hilarity. Goal flashes. With M and D Green Pharmacy. Celtic three, St Johnston nil, and it's James Forrest. He rifles one into the bottom corner. I'll allow you to react to that in a second because listen to this. Goal flashes. With M and D Green Pharmacy. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the roof coming off Rugby Park four. 2 to Kilmarnock 2-0 two down at half time Kyle Vassell has scored again 4 goals in 12 minutes Has turned this on its head And then some Remember the 2,500 St Mirren fans? Yep. Some of them are leaving It's 4-2 to Kilmarnock Well it's an embarrassment for St Mirren uh, You know the, the, they've caved in The roof has fallen about their heads oh, Don't tell me goal. What a goal scoring run we're on here Goal flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy Goal Hearts And it's a Stephen Kingsley special The free kick You know he's got that in his locker 20 plus yards Not a problem Into the back of the net And it's level between Ross County And Hearts Right let's go in order Celtic Mark Wilson It is actually a stunning finish From James Forrest Apparently he's the best winger at the club According to Brendan Rodgers um, Which led to a bit of Confusion about why he's maybe not played more football but no mistake with this finish. Yeah, without doubt. Good first touch, great reverse, shown his worth, you know, and it's not about how you start the season, it's about how you finish. And James Forrest having him about the club, um, you know, has proven worthwhile. He certainly can come on and contribute, and he has done in oh, recent weeks. Just quickly, I, I I think I read out the wrong score. It's, of course, Ross County, two hearts, yeah. one. Did I say one each? Uh, I yeah. thought I did. I thought I could hear myself back. Um, so don't forget It is 2-1 to Ross County My apologies um, VAR check for a possible offside Says Dave Galloway So I wonder Is that one of them Where the goal the goalies maybe Unsighted Someone standing in front Are going to have to assess Whether um, They were interfering with play or not Motherwell have made a change um, Maybe a bit light in the Well not light in the attacking areas But they've put a youngster on They've put Mark Ferry on And Jack Vale off um, got the new signing on the bench An attacker So I thought maybe That would have been an option But not to be yet Forrest is the epitome Of the big occasion player for Celtic 17 years Scored in every one of those Oh right Ref's going to take a look So it sounds like Yeah it's one of those If you remember We had A couple of high profile examples of this uh, Livy Dundee I think So although it's offside It's not what they call A factual decision Because the ref is going to have to Assess whether he thinks That the offside player was interfering with play So that's why they go over To look at the monitor Unless I've picked that up wrong But I'm just basing it Since it was a Kingsley free kick Thought it must be something Like that um, Let's wait and see What happens there uh, You need to do more On the teaser We need more correct answers We need more guesses So listen to the question From Hugh Keevans The question I have played alongside Steve O'Donnell And Callum Wilson I have been managed by Tony Mowbray And Paul Hickenbottom I won player of the year at my club for three consecutive years with two different clubs. Who am I? Tough question, I think. I mean, Mark Wilson got it really quickly, which makes me think it's easy. Yeah. Uh, no offence, but okay. <laughs> um, seems to be not not as uh, many right answers as I thought. So get your thinking caps on at Clyde SSB. <laughs> I can't, I can't SSB. believe the mentality of you to get the answer again. To just oh, go and cheat again and after tail I know. I know. No good, goal. <laughs> no goal for Hearts. That's an interesting one. Looking forward to seeing that back. Uh, Ross County two Hearts nil, and that might be 
That might be that really is Hearts look to run out a bit of I'll tell you why that's significant a bit. If Ross County win this game And St Johnson lose as they already have done at Celtic Park Three down All of a sudden Ross County Are one point off St Johnston And St Johnston are the team who have slipped And it could be a bad bad day for Craig Levine Does it drag Motherwell a bit as well? Uh, Motherwell uh, Are on yeah, they'll have five points, points between them if, if it stays this way. All need to play each other. Of course, yeah. yeah. And three games to go until the split. Um, As things stand, Aberdeen yeah. go above St Johnston. And they would be only two points away from Motherwell. So St Johnston slipped down and Motherwell not out of it yet. Uh, double save from Kelarus as Theo Bayer tries to level for Motherwell. It's getting a bit nervy there, says Fraser Wishart, but still 1 0 Aberdeen. Ida and Home are coming on for Celtic. Makes sense. I thought we'd always see Adam Ida at some point. Celtic could yeah. have it wrapped up. Yeah, it's a good substitution to have. Um, he'll be looking to get his name on the uh, score sheet this afternoon. I think Celtic will create a few more chances. They're comfortable. 3 0 up. And uh, when that happens, you come on a sub, you want to make your mark right away, especially if you're a striker. So it'll be. Looking to try and get a goal Odin well, Thiago Holmes An interesting one <laughs> yeah, Mark. I, know there, I know there was an inju- I think there was an injury involved But he's not featured at all Since scoring against Bucky Thistle yeah. Remember that? Well I, I felt that That game was a big game for him um, And although he scored I don't think he really took the game By the scruff of the neck Like you'd imagine him and, to by, do. and by the way The last appearance before that Was November So that was January mm-hmm. And that was his first since November So not played a lot of football no. at all Huge gaps And the Celtic fans liked him When they seen him But not enough football Under his belt Goal flashes With m and Green Pharmacy Kilmarnock 5 Oof. St Mirren 2 On Monday night Roger Hanna And usually Andy Halliday have to pick their result of the weekend I'm wondering if they look no further Kilmarnock were 2-0 down at half time and with this one nowhere near finished they're 5-2 up St Mirren have gone it's an incredible solo run and finish by a very impressive youngster David Watson goal of the weekend suggesting Roger Hanna what a result good what player, a game that boy and yeah, like I player. said there when I, I went 2-1-2-2 two, 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 I thought Kelly would go on um, in the stretcher yeah, league yeah. just to purely you. because what's at the top end of the pitch for him Derek McInnes signed well in the summer to add to what he had at the top end and Daz mentioned that he's got a good bench as well uh, and they're relentless they can score against Celtic they can score against Rangers they're creative their big disappointment though was last week because he must have realistically thought that they would have a chance going to Hamden and actually getting to the final after beating Celtic Rangers this season so disappointing but great way to bounce back this afternoon you just wonder Stephen Robertson sitting on the bench Ooh. wondering what what's team What's come out for the second half here because <laughs> uh, they were in cruise control uh, the big support down there everybody was happy uh, but well done to Derek McInnes and Kamarnock that is a fantastic what turnaround Stephen Robertson needs his bang bang Darren Lang <laughs> Because he scored again. Who has? Bang, bang, bang. bang. You're joking. Strenard 1, Elgin City 2. (laughs) Terran Lang (laughs) pulls one back. It's not that dramatic, is it? Did they play that over the PA? If they don't, they're missing a trick. I mean, imagine a crackly PA. Down there Strenrar 1 Elgin 2 There you go I never thought we'd pay so much attention To that scoreline But there you go uh, Kelly fans waving Singing cheerio To the St Mirren fans There was so much made About the 2,500 Going down there They were loving life At 2 nil up at half time And they're now 5 2 Used to get a good 45 minutes the, the, Everybody's went I home I think that'll be on their mind somehow <laughs> uh, the, the, the post-match press conference We need to hear Is Stephen Robinson A man who does not mince his words this is a calamitous second half for St Mirren and embarrassing for all concerned. Certainly a game of two halves. Oh, throwing certainly. on all sorts now just because they can. Ennis Cameron, Kevin Ennis. Van Veen, Rory McKenzie and Greg Stewart all coming on for Kilmarnock. Van, he's, he's Van, Van Veen's not scored, have No, it's not been happening yet for him, no. it has to be said. Uh, Pulvara and Phillips on for Aberdeen Clarkson and Hoyle off 10 minutes to go for Motherwell to try and equalise right that Celtic change that we alluded to Ida and Holm came on Kyogo and Carter Vickers went off so Iwata drops into the back four and on Celtic go from there so what it does show is they're still managing Carter Vickers yeah. and that's going to remain the same 
I believe until the end of the season and I just wonder how long for um, he, he just can't get any consistency with his fitness and he's such an important player to this Celtic side uh, five year deal under his belt you need to get that right do we assume that Lagerby, Elka and Navrotsky are just going now Navrotsky's I mean, not involved so I think he's mm-hmm. injured but Lagerby, Elka Lagerby, Elka you would think put him on there instead of putting a water back into the back line I get what you're saying, but also is it if you want if you want to bring on the two more attacking players, though, it's not like they've brought like do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a way of, of control, getting them in. I don't think it's the same again. as swapping like for like. Yeah, I can I can see that. I can see that. I don't think it is. Uh, but you know, certainly in the starting eleven, again, he's gone for Stephen Welsh over yeah. Lagerbielka. If I'm sitting in I'm Lagerbielka, I'm sitting going. Yeah, what I am mean, I doing I, here? When my wages they're, come they're in. moving midfielders into the back line. I'm not even getting a look. But, but they're in charge <laughs> of the game. Say when's my wages <laughs> coming? <in? laughs> <laughs> that's, that's you in a nutshell. That's uh, listen. I would in the old day, the new day, sorry, of football. I would like to be the third choice goalkeeper. I'm that quite, I'm quite that's happy. Best with job, <laughs> best job <laughs> in it. Yeah, a f- brilliant. Going warm and warm them up and sit on the bench. Well, sit the stand. Don't even sit on the bench. Now. Benji Seagrist. That's him. Number three goalkeeper yeah. at Celtic. That's a great job. You need a Geiger counter to find them. Good goalkeeper as well. It just hasn't happened for him. And Celtic, you've got to say. Right, we're in the business end of the day, certainly. A couple of games are poised. Well, Motherwell certainly. One goal brings them level, and that would probably look towards a share of the spoils at this stage. There's actually yeah, a bit more distance in them all. I was forgetting that the... The gaps had opened up. Celtic are 3-0 up. They'll be fine. Kilmarnock 5-2 up. They'll be fine. Hibs 3 up. The only one maybe time for Hearts to get two, but it hasn't looked likely. Uh, Motherwell swapping uh, two, one youngster for another, but one's a bit more well-known. So Lennon Miller off and Dylan Wells on 83 minutes. But uh, Motherwell running out of time. Maybe not mm. going to happen today, Hugh. Yeah, that just doesn't seem to be there, Dave. The Lennon Miller goal disallowed by VAR... Could be the turning point for them Had it been allowed to go 1-1 The whole complexion of the afternoon changes But uh, you know, Stuart Kettlewell has thrown on I take it he's used up all his subs now uh, and I'm not w- sure if it's all yet It might be four But anyway Whatever he's tried It's not working I mean Mark Stuart Kettlewell's not shy You'll have something to say About that disallowed goal for sure Without doubt, yeah, he, he doesn't usually hold back He speaks his mind he, Pretty much in detail a lot of the time but I think he's every right to be frustrated, seen it at half time, and it's ridiculous how you, how you can tell it. You know, the referee will call him, called over to the monitor. He must have had to look at that a good few times to really strain his eyes to see that hitting an arm. And you must have applied common sense in if you're a referee. You must know that. But, it's not, but I think there's probably two layers. It's does it hit the arm, and then is that. An understandable or, an, or a, a natural position for his arm to be in anyway. Yeah. You know, given what what action's happening. Uh, right, another goal, Celtic Park. Goal flashes with M and D Green Pharmacy. But it's for St Johnson. Is it Ooh. a consolation? Is it the start of what would be an unbelievable comeback? We'll find out. Connor Smith high into the net after a Joe Hart save, so there will be no clean sheet. For Celtic today, Celtic 3, St Johnston 1. Well, the only uh, priority for Celtic was to win and go top of the league and see if Europe has taken something out of Rangers when they go to Dens Park tomorrow. That that was always going to be the main objective. They've achieved the objective and that's the proverbial consolation. Dis- I'll give you a two minute... Disappointed with that. Hugh. Sorry, on you go. go on. I, th- I think they'll be disappointed with that. Especially, it just shows you Carter Vickers goes off oh. yeah. and, and they lose a goal. Um, and they've not got a natural centre half on there. Lager Belka obviously still sitting in the bench. So, Do defenders actually have clean sheet bonuses? And if so, do you get it if it, you keep a clean sheet when you're on and then you go off? I've, I've never heard anybody <laughs> nah, in my time with so. clean sheets. But you know what? Celtic can't rely on Carter Vickers babysitting the other three players. And when he's there, everything's fine. And when he's not, they just leak goals. So they need to get that fixed They need to get him fit first and foremost They need to find a suitable partner for him That they can build a relationship next season um, And you know Any time they take him out that line up They're a much easier side to play against Yeah, yeah I totally agree with you I think that you've got a 
obviously a big opportunity to score against Celtic when he's he's certainly not there, especially balls into the box. He, he's so dominant in the, the air, he reads the game very well, he's strong. He's a massive miss when he goes off the pitch, I've got to say. And Motherwell have used all their subs, Hugh, so they're yeah. out of options and slowly, well, no, quickly, I should say, quickly running out of time as well. Let's round the teaser off to leave room for late drama, should we okay. get it? Okay. The second half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online. I have played alongside Stephen O'Donnell and Callum Wilson. I have been managed by Tony Mowbray and Paul Hickingbottom. I won Player of the Year for three consecutive years with two different clubs. Who am I? I used to live a 10 minute walk away from here. I am John Fleck. John Fleck, well done to Mark Conway in third, Celtic FC 110 in second, and Derek Carkery was the winner. Well done to all of you. Alistair Johnson has the ball in the net Flag up Is that three? Is that three disallowed mm. goals for Celtic? From Kyogo, on yep. top one of the one that they Jordan. actually did score um, Early on So I think that stands for now Although you never know We'll wait and see VAR is checking it So Stand by And Miofsky off Sockler on for Aberdeen As they look to see out the game Oh Gustav Lagerbielka's coming on Oh Really spotted and what, What's happened there for a centre back To be brought on with Five well. minutes to go well, perhaps concerned if we have to lose another, then how that would reflect on a midfielder playing in the back line when you've got a centre half. <laughs> Is that Brendan <laughs> Rodgers admitting they probably got that wrong? Might just be that somebody's struggling, struggling. A bit yeah. Late in the game as well. Uh, that check's still ongoing, so maybe this Alistair Johnson goal will count and will restore Celtic's three goal advantage, but we wait and see. I think they've created plenty today, no doubt about that. You know, good opportunities, hit the underside of the bar as well, a couple of saves. This has been goals. a I mean I'm quite sad obviously In what I'm about to explain This has always been a bit of a fascination for me As to how stadium announcers Resist the temptation to be a bit sarcastic Or you know inject a bit of personality When they're delivering what should be Just a simple clear message So the Motherwell stadium announcers just said Substitution for Aberdeen Leaving the field slowly Is Bojan <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a Yeah, 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 yeah There like should that. be more character yeah. I told not? you the, the stadium announcer At Tynecastle When I scored two goals Two oh. own goals Two own goals Two own goals in the same season <laughs> For Dundee United So one at the start of the season At Tynecastle And then went back there Later on And scored my second own goal And the stadium announcer said And for the second time This no. season Mark Wilson <laughs> yes. Sunshine oh, He has the old you. joker He's Yeah he has yeah. I think it made the back page Of the paper that right, Offside No goal Alistair Johnson mm. After quite a delay So I don't know what the... Terrific finish too one, But yeah, there you go doesn't score many, does he? Nope. No. Uh, yeah, so actually, un- unless he is struggling, m- maybe Matt O'Reilly is struggling, sorry. Lager Bielka's on for him. So Iwata would go back into midfield. To midfield. He's been uh, well, been moved around today. Just sharp, sharp, a wee bit more defensive. St. Johnson's going to put balls into your box. What they don't want to do is one ball up to the striker, bounces in the box, and they put it away. It's 3 2, and all of a sudden. <laughs> It's a whole yeah, different really game really comfortable afternoon yeah. Looks not so much Turned in its head I don't know if there's a competition Between Kilmarnock and Dumbarton But Spartans 2 Dumbarton 6 James Graham With the goal 3 minutes added At Fir Park 4 added At Rugby Park So we're in that Stage Of the afternoon Don't forget Your chance To have your say Is Minutes away So give us a shout On 01419511025 and we'll get your calls lined up reacting to today's results, performances, talking points and looking forward to tomorrow as well. Six added for Dave Galloway in Dingwall. So we've got a few different four for David Friel. Big result for my employers. 2-0 up big home in Morton. Oh, but what about Queen's good. Park? Queen's Park and Wraith, 0-0. No, no. Have you seen the real drama though? If the, I have no idea if this is true. You might be able to give me a bit of local knowledge. Um, who was it that sent this to me? Uh, was it Ronnie there was a couple Ross brought it to my attention Ross Flanny the allegation I mean listening to the, the talk on the show last week who's, who do we reckon has got arguably the longest throw in Scottish football Lewis Strap. Lewis Strap. the allegation is that Partick Thistle have moved the advertising oh. boards to prevent him getting the long run up 
on That's clever. his long throw. I like that. So apparently, they used to be situated elsewhere. Uh, Mark Wilson's gone suspiciously quiet. I'll well, tell he's you not, that. He's not in his head like that. I, Hold on. I can not comment either way. And they've they seem to have moved him up to like the attacking third, so that he can't get a run up. And put the long throw into the box Just, just a lot of sponsors this week uh, uh, interested uh, companies Who was the brains behind that? Because that is good thinking I don't know what you're talking about You do know what I'm I talking don't. about You're nodding your head <sighs> Are you going to tell us? Who, who was the brains I, I behind that? I don't know that? Wasn't certainly you I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> Fur Hill Dark Arts yeah. Says David Friel That's uh, true yeah. Honestly. Anything buried under the, yep. the ground this week? Wraith Rovers have <laughs> blown the opportunity. Unbelievable. That title race in the championship it's like it's good because it's tight, but it's starting to annoy me a bit. Mm. I like somebody take advantage, will you? I'm yeah. looking at you, Wraith Rovers. No offence, Dundee United. I don't really mind which one, but my goodness. You, that's. You can't keep doing that to state the obvious. No, no. Dundee United are handing you every opportunity. To go out there and stake a claim of winning the league, and they just, yeah, they just can't. As I, I hate to say it, they've never ever replaced me. No. Ever, Mark. What <laughs> <laughs> uh, really have you got to go to we get him when, out of here? Eight minutes. When they have him, my day, mate. I don't know if his performance has been good enough ah, today to get away. Get away. Keep, him, keep him here. Right, listen, I, I promise one thing: I'll listen to you. Phone us in the cat in the journey up. We'll phone you. Right, to see how you're getting on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, they've pulled one back though. Maybe he's jumped over the advertising oh, no! boards. Partick this one too. I thought I was full time. Morton one, Robbie Muirhead, but it is the ninety fourth minute, so oh. uh, probably too late for anything else. Inverness one, Air United two. That's a full time result there from the Highlands. In a week in which the controversy was over a battery storage yes. farm or whatever it's called. Which the council won't let them have. Council have knocked it back, costing Inverness money, threatening the club financially. Mm. You big on that? What's that? Battery storage facilities. No. Never mind. No, I'm not big on that. Is that what it's called? It's something along those lines, isn't it? Yeah, it's all to do with batteries. <laughs> thanks for, thanks, <laughs> thanks for that insight. We'll burn that one out. <laughs> Um, yeah, ba- a battery farm. Sorry, a battery farm, um, and it was rejected by the local council. There, things Scottish football just gets itself in all sorts of situations. Anyway, full time, got to be game and result of the day at Rugby Park. Roger Hanna. Quite incredible, Gordon Kilmarnock five St Mirren two. The most amazing turnaround in the Premiership this season has put Kilmarnock above St Mirren and given them the nod in the push for a European qualification spot. They were outclassed in the first half. They fell two 0 down at the break. It could have been even worse. St Mirren dominating in front of their two and a half thousand travelling support, but Kelly was simply transformed after the break. They scored five goals in an 18 minute spell to devastate Stephen Robinson's visitors it was quite the most remarkable turnaround they fell behind after 20 minutes Charles Dunn scoring his first ever St Mirren goal slamming home from inside the 6 yard box after Kelly failed to clear a corner from the left it was another corner from the left that led to the second goal in 39 minutes Michael Mandron this time finding the net at the back post St Mirren won total charge at half time but they totally collapsed in the second half Derry McInnes tweaking things going to 4-4-2 with David Watson moving out central midfield and going to right back and from the first kickoff, they looked at the different side Danny Armstrong fired off target from Liam Donnelly's pass then Saints keeper Zach Hemming back at Rugby Park made an impressive double save to deny Robbie Dees and Marley Watkins but then in 61 minutes Kelly got a foothold in the game Kyle Vassell the skipper netting at the second attempt it was a scruffy finish but it had a transformative impact on the game four minutes later they got a penalty kick young referee Ross Hardy pointing to this board backed up by VAR Alan Muir after Ryan Flynn had tripped Watkins in the box Danny Armstrong after a long delay slammed the corner, the ball into the corner for 2-2 that was in 65 minutes in 68 it was 3-2 Armstrong turning provided a delicate cross from the right a glancing header from Watkins sneaked inside the far post for 3-2 that became 4-2 in 73 minutes Liam Polworth over the top Vassell bus clear and flashed the right foot finished past Hemming into the corner and the best was left to last 5-2 in 79 minutes Watson a swashbuckling run from right back nobody could get the ball off me bust into the Saints box and a slip finish past the goalkeeper for 5-2 the Kilmarnock fans are in absolute heaven tonight they thought at 2-0 at half time they were out of Europe they're now in pole position Kilmarnock 5 St Mirren 2
Full time Easter Road, David Friel. Yeah, full time Hibs 3, Livingston 0. Hibs move into top six, really comfortable victory, but Levy are heading for the drop. They've been in the Premiership for six years, but you do wonder if this is the day it all came to an end. It looks like they're going to finish the day 10 points behind Ross County at the bottom, and we are talking miracles if they're going to stay up. Hibs won't care about that. They've overtaken the day into sixth place, and I'm sure they'll be supporting Rangers at Dens Park tomorrow. Hibs are 3 0 up after 22 minutes. The game was over by then. Opener came after three minutes, Jordan a beta tapping in from an app, Adam Lafondra cross, in seven minutes it was 2-0, another slick move, Joe Newell played an Eli Yuan on the right, he crossed from Mizzy and Maya Lida to finish, Levy were toiling badly, it was 3-0 in 22 minutes, Tiz Cadden race forward, slipped a pass to Yuan and he crossed for Lafondra to tap in, Levy had chances either side of the break, but the second half was really a bit of a non-event, Hibs are comfortable, but Levy looked like a team definitely heading for the championship, full time, Hibs 3, Livingston 0. And it's also full time at Motherwell Fraser Wishart it is Motherwell nil, Aberdeen 1 and the 1,097 fans to my right are absolutely delighted they came out today no idea which Aberdeen would turn up they got the best Aberdeen really good performance by their team and a big result especially given the Ross County result in Dingwall they edged it over the 90 minutes certainly the better team in the first half only the Leighton Clarkson goal to show the good play Motherwell denied an equaliser on VR and Willie Collin this allowed a Lennon Miller goal in 38 minutes for handball by Tio Bear, but much as Mother will push in the second half, the Aberdeen defence was outstanding. Aberdeen's early head at the break with that Clarkson goal, 25 minutes. McGrath cut back Miofsky, fierce shot hit the post. It came back really quickly to Clarkson, who was about 16 yards out. Great technique to get over the ball, and he thundered a volley into the back of the net. Dons could have had more. Miofsky chip drifted just wide. And then Kelly denied the striker just before half time. The Motherwell chances few and far between that. Lennon Miller goal I spoke about. They thought they'd scored. The shot hit about three people into the back of the net. Willie Collin went to the screen after VAR had uh, advised him to do so and disallowed the goal for handball. Apparently against Teal Bear going for a header in the build-up to the goal. A bright start to the second half by Motherwell. Don's back four clearing a number of crosses. At the other end, Graham Shinney tested Kelly with a good low shot. The game had really opened up. Majofsky headed a McGrath cross over a decent chance. Blair Spitzel in at a half chance on the turn from 12 yards from a veil pass. It didn't quite get connect, but still brought out a good save by Roos. Aberdeen were next up. McGrath made space in the box. He's fiercely hit left foot shot, heading to the top corner, brilliantly blocked by Dan Casey. You felt there could be a goal either end and the players could sense this as the game became more cautious. Teal Bear then brought it a double save at his near post by Keller Roos and then the striker was inches wide with a header. Stuart Kettlewell sensed that his team needed that goal and they rang the changes to try and get the equaliser. Aberdeen dropping deeper but Motherwell couldn't create that chance they needed to get a point from this game. In fact, it was Aberdeen that almost got the second goal. Sub Povara tried to curl one past Kelly, who palmed the ball away, and Sokolov somehow, rather than head the ball home, headed the ball back into the middle of the goal. Dons managed to see the game out pretty comfortably end, and much needed three points and a happier international break. But for another real disappointment, they played well enough, they tried hard enough, but they couldn't get that goal, and now they're probably looking over their shoulder again rather than up the table. Full time at third part, Motherwell nil. Aberdeen won Full time whistle has also gone in Dingwall Dave Galloway Full time Ross County 2 Hearts 1 A pre-match blow for the host With Connor Randall dropping out Replaced by Max Sheaf in the starting lineup, And they really should have taken an early lead But Jordan White's at full stretch To reach Simon Murray's cross Could only put the ball over the bar From point blank distance The visitors gained the upper hand Kenneth Vargas set up Shanklin To shoot inches over County keeper George Wickens Made a smart save to keep out Toby Sibbett volley after Stephen Kingsley's ball in and Vargas rattled the crossbar with a powerful drive after Alan Forrest's effort was blocked but in 43 minutes the Staggies went ahead, Simon Murray's shot was saved and he got the better of Civic over the loose ball to score from a tight angle Hart started the second half well, Alan Forrest created an opening for himself quite cleverly and his effort stung the palms of Wickens but Ross County doubled their advantage on 49 minutes after a well-worked move, Eamon Brophy set up Simon Murray to hammer home his and his side's second goal from 12 yards or so. Hearts uh, piled on the pressure to try to pull one back. Lawrence Shankland was booked for diving in the box. George Grant's low drive was saved at full stretch. Alan Forrest's cross was deflected onto the post. And Stephen Kingsley thought he had scored with a quite uh, magnificent free kick from about 20 yards or 
so only for VAR to rule it out for offside. Yutaro Oda did get one back for Hearts after 91 minutes with a shot in off the post, but County managed to close this one out to win what could be a massive three points. It finished here, Ross County 2, Hearts 1. And it's full time at Celtic Park as well, Andrew McLean. Celtic 3, St Johnston 1, the full-time score. A straightforward afternoon for the home side who leapfrogged Rangers to go top of the table. It did take them a while to get going in this one, but they really picked up towards the end of the first half. Almost a goal and a big penalty claim from a corner. Dyson made a shot blocked on the line by Luke Robinson. There was a VAR check for possible handball, but no penalty given. Iwata also had one blocked on the line before Kyogo found himself on and offside in vital moments before the break. Offside when he headed in 10 minutes before the half-time whistle but his next header counted Nicholas Kuhn cutting in from the left a really nice floated cross into the middle of the box Mitov came for it but it was Kyogo who got there first headed into the bottom corner for 1-0, he thought he had another just before half-time but the flag was up for this one again, perfect start to the second half for Celtic though, Kyogo played into the box, his ball across the face of goal and it was his turn to set up Nicholas Kuhn to tap in just 43 seconds after the break they continued to dominate the ball they made some changes as well and it was a substitute who got the third the ball worked across from the left to James Forrest a really good powerful strike with his left foot into the bottom corner to put Celtic 3-0 up St Johnson did get a consolation uh, it came from a Stevie May header that was saved by Joe Harper back into a dangerous area Connor Smith followed in and put it high into the net. Celtic had another ruled out for offside late on. Alistair Johnson it was this time and they also should have scored a fourth right at the death from a corner. The ball falling to Tomoki Iwata at the back post somehow headed over. However, Celtic get all three points. Pressure now on Rangers to do the same at Dens Park tomorrow. The full-time score, Celtic 3, St Johnston 1. And now it's over to you to have your say 01419511025. Is that you, Busty Boy? Every woman, every Best wishes and listening this afternoon. Away to I'm your going to get in the caravan for your I'm birthday. going to the caravan. Right, good on you. Have a good night. Thank you. See you later. Gordon okay. DL's away to celebrate his birthday. We said we'd let him go, but you get involved right now if you can. 01419511025. Celtic fans, it was the win you were looking for. You go top of the table. Of course, Rangers can respond tomorrow. But what did you make of that 3-1 victory in the end? Pick up the phone and let us know who stood out for you, who was good, who underperformed, what about the result, the performance, the title race, do it all. 01419511025. I would love to hear from you St Mirren fans. You were 2-0 up and you lose 5-2 against your closest rivals in the league how does that feel on the flip side I bet it feels brilliant for you Kilmarnock fans so again come on down 01419511025 Motherwell fans bit of a disappointment is that the top 6 hopes taking a serious dent are you now looking over your shoulder again what about the disallowed goal that alleged handball by Theo Bear? I think there'll be a few VAR complaints about that one and anything else at all you pick 01419511025 if you call us right now we'll try and get you on next the Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast With Lucas Volvo The full electric range is now available on Motability Get in pole position for cheaper van insurance go, go, go. With mustard.co.uk With top insurance providers A five minute pit stop with us Could get you out in front in the race to savings See what you could save and compare your van insurance today with mustard.co.uk. T's and C's apply. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Volvo. Book a test drive for the Volvo EX30 today. Head online for details. Action as it happens. And your reaction from five on the open line. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Evans and Mark Wilson are here to take your calls. Gordon DL's birthday plans mean he's left us. That's honestly what sort of show we're running in here. Anyway, 01419511025 and looking for your reaction to today's games. I'll do a recap of the full time scores just in case you missed any. Uh, and to whet your appetite But Celtic fans How do you feel after the 3-1 win? Of course the victory is all the priority 
Today going top of the table How did the performance match up Who impressed you Who maybe didn't impress you How does this leave things in the title race Kilmarnock and St Mirren fans You served up an absolute treat For the neutral and for Kilmarnock fans Not such a treat for St Mirren Who are 2-0 up at the break and lost 5-2 But both of you Get in touch and let us know how you feel after that Because it was um, yeah quite something 01419511025 Right, this is the full-time picture. Whilst you get your calls in, and please do right now, especially see if you're... I love this bit on a Saturday because you're getting in the car or the bus or the train or whatever after the game and we get that raw eyewitness reaction to it all. So give us a call. Anyway, Celtic 3, St Johnston 1, Hibs 3, Livingston 0, Kilmarnock 5, St Mirren 2, Motherwell 0, Aberdeen 1, and Ross County 2, Hearts 1. In the Championship, Airdrie 5, Arbroath 2, Inverness 1, Air United 2, Partick Thistle 2, Morton 1, Queen's Park 0, Wraith Rovers 0 And in League 1, Edinburgh City 2, Alloa 5, Hamilton Ackies 3, Stirling Albion 0 Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 1, Montrose 1, Annan 1 In League 2, Bonnie Rig Rose 1, Clyde 2, 4 for 1, Stenhouse Muir 1, Peterhead 1, East Fife 1, Stranraer 1, Elgin 2 And the Spartans 2 Barton 6 The English Premier League Is your thing Burnley 2 Brentford 1 Luton 1 Forest 1 Right come on 0141 951 1025 Quite a day Hugh Evans. Yeah Celtic back on top And now For the last time You'll be able to see What influence If any Europe has had On the legs of the Rangers players When they go to Dundee tomorrow Because after that game it's international break and everyone comes back with a level playing field. A two-week break from domestic football. No European football between now and the end of the season. And the remainder of the championship becomes terrifically interesting. So it depends now tomorrow. Will Europe have any effect on Rangers? Celtic have done their bit. They have won. It didn't need to be fantastic to look at. It just had to be three points. And after a faltering start Celtic got there with a bit to spare we'll get on to the specifics Mark as a, a very general overview what did you make of the Celtic afternoon well a good one because you look at the scoreline uh, comfortable disappointing that they lost a goal but plenty of chances created Q will go back in the score sheet so Brendan Rodgers I think will be satisfied and especially to go top of the league and now the pressure switches to Rangers because in the past or this season it has been on Celtic to respond. Sometimes they've not dealt with it properly. Now it's on to Rangers. Can they go to Dens Park and get a result to get back to the top of the table? And I believe that's going to be the way. It's going to be from now to the end of the season. And then when you look further down the league, movement, you know, everywhere. Kilmarnock, Leapfrog and St Mirren, Aberdeen, above St Johnson. It's been a good day of football with a lot of goals. 0141-951-1025 Let's bring in Michael from Burnside How are you Michael? I'm good thanks How's yourself guys? Not bad, not bad What did you make of that 3-1 win then? Yeah it was pretty routine I think um, I think the first half We created a lot of chances I wouldn't say wasteful But I just sort of We were just on top but St Johnson didn't offer much he Just sort of It was quite Just routine just, I think Just comfortable what it, Yeah what it should be I think like, That's that, what it should be Is that kind of I mean Maybe the type of result and performance that the the league table would dictate, Hugh. You know, just the, yeah. there wasn't there wasn't much fuss. Yes, yeah, Celtic conceded, but they were three 0 up. And yeah, I mean, to be fair to Celtic, they've scored three and could have been six or seven. Uh, the, you know, there were VAR decisions gone out against them. Uh, the, the 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 bar saved St Johnston on another occasion, and the goalkeeper has defied them. So it could have been six or seven one. Uh, the only importance of the day was going top of the league and seeing if Rangers mm. suffer at all post Benfica. Is it somewhere in the middle though, Mark? Because I've got visions of you know if that if that's a one nil and it's a bit scrappier than that, I, I still feel like we would have had Celtic fans on right now going, you know, this is still a worrying oh, sign. But doubt, as yeah. Michael's point out, it was a bit more, it was more routine than that. So is the truth maybe somewhere in between? It was just about three points Yeah um, well Like I said at the start of the show People going along to Celtic Park Will want the full package They want a result They want their goal scorers to score They want a performance They want Carter Vickers to look solid um, And I don't think it was Sparkling vintage Celtic 
But within that They did create a lot of chances They had three goals Chalked off And as Hugh said They had the bar They had other numerous opportunities But You wouldn't say Oh it's their best performance this season So far from it So three points Kyogo on the score sheet Couldn't get another assist And a goal within that as well So Oh no a good afternoon But you're right If that's 1-0 the Celtic fans are saying Oh it's a hard watch And these games coming up uh, I'm not very optimistic about it Maybe it's a wee bit different How important Michael For a couple of the guys That Mark mentioned there So Kyogo Because he's been in and out of the team But he started And he scored And then Nicholas Kuhn You know a lot of stick for him But he was heavily involved as well Yeah I think Kuhn just needed A bit of time to settle I think like, we're very quick Just to sort of Jump in the bandwagon quickly And just say Oh he's, he's not good enough Or whatever else We don't give players time And it, I suppose that's the nature of it but I think he, he definitely seems this week last week definitely turned on to a game and with Kyogo I think he's always made those runs I just think he sort of hasn't had the supply that he, he had last year it's a completely different style that we play obviously under Rodgers compared to last season the season before I think he's been making those runs but the balls haven't been coming into him and he's, he's, he's suffered I think because of the style but the last few weeks especially since the second half of the, the Motherwell game away I think the, the balls have been coming to the box more we've been more direct and the runs that he's been making I think he's been found a lot more so yeah, I think he's coming on to a game and I think Ida's obviously helped as well because he's banging goals and he's getting a game so he's obviously had to up his game so mm-hmm. I, I'm quite happy with that I do literally one, one, one wee point was we uh, we are three one up and Johnson goes through. We've not seen the lines yet, so I, you can't defend it. Let's see, it's offside. But from where I was sitting, it certainly looked onside. And see what I've seen again on social. I hate saying it, but on social media, then the stills and stuff like that. He's a good three yards onside when he receives the ball. Now I, I can't, I, I can't for life of me see how that's being given as offside. And see when the league is as tight as it is, we goal different could come into play with it at the end of the year. These things have got to be cleared up straight away. We've still not seen the lines. The game finished, what, nearly half an hour ago? How are these? How have we still not seen the lines for those goals? Like, it's got to be quicker, Va, and we've got to have an understanding as to why things are happening and when they're happening. So just don't know what you think about that. To the boring bit, obviously, look, that game's not televised in the UK, as far as I'm aware. So, I mean, I know there are ways and means for people. Hmm. I, I wouldn't care to get involved. Um, so it's it's bound to be less... Televised Advertised Whatever um, But that doesn't take away From the core of Michael's point People do want that clarity Whether you're in the stadium yeah. Whether you're on Watching at home Or listening at home um, You know Fraser Wishart was telling us At Fir Park Mother will get a goal ruled out And genuinely no, Nobody can Could even imagine What it was for at the time um, well, and I, I wish I had something new To say about When it comes to offsides Mark a lot of people probably won't look offside or people will say it's tight that's why we brought the technology in so that it can determine otherwise they would just let people use their eyes and yeah <sighs> people people and get caught t- up though thinking that that it would be the player that scores goal it's offside maybe it was something that happened in the build-up that could have been offside but if again, it went wide point. and back we need to know that then of course and uh, you know what i feel sorry for the fans we're all about attracting supporters to the stadiums Getting crowds um, as high as we can Attendance is really high And Daz is always on about it It's been good this year But when you've got access to commentary And certain broadcasters have got access to VR And can understand what they're chatting about Then they broadcast it You can understand why fans would go You know what, I'd rather just consume the game By watching on TV Because at least I know what's happening With all these stoppages I can totally get with that if you're in that stadium and Motherwell's a prime example and you're sitting going, yes, we're back in the game, what are they checking for again? A handball? Well, I didn't see a handball. Did you see it? And nobody's seen it. Of course it's going to drive you crazy. In fairness, Hugh, this is this bit of it, though, is just... Like, well, football, it's not Scottish football. World yeah. football's made its bed and needs to lie in it with this stuff. If you pay the technology and the technology provider tells you that it's reliable and you trust that and it's tested by FIFA and all that sort of stuff... You, you've just not got much choice, really, but to say, well, there you are, it, 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 was, off, it was offside. Yeah, um, yeah. Unless, of course, you get one of those proper procedural meltdowns that, like we saw in the English Premier League. Um, but Michael it won't be alone, me, you, Mark, just It's nice to see, nice to try and understand what's going on. But you won't. Not now, not ever. Well, no, no but you, I mean, you should. When the highlights come on and stuff, you should. But, but the, the, we, you have to... Because it's not, it's not like a confusing... You know, loads of factors here. The 
Who's offside the, the, Where the, are the lines well, the, the, the people The referee And those in Clydesdale House Have decided It's offside Now Michael and everyone else Is left in the dark And uh, As we said earlier A whole stadium At Motherwell Were left in the dark Over who did what I Stick to what I said earlier Football was not meant To look and sound like this But The the decision to, uh, to disallow the Alistair Johnson goal was arrived at after the proper procedures had taken place. It's just unfortunate that Michael and everyone else who paid to get in will be left can, unaware of that. Can it be simplified that if, if broadcasters get a feed to VR, stadium announcers can also receive that feed and it could be quite simple that they're listening offset or handball check, they're hearing a the handball check to be a can they then translate right, that to but, the but, supporters? Okay, but that's a different example. If you're taking the handball, though, like some some of this stuff would make a difference. But would that really? You know, if somebody says that because I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitter. They just don't think it was offside. They just don't think it looks offside. So, yeah, and, uh, on hear, Alistair Johnson. But what if it's an offside and something to build up? Right, but still, they might not think that player looks offside. No, of course, as my but, example. But they know. They know then. Oh, my focus was on Johnson. Oh, it's not for Johnson. I didn't even think. 20 seconds before who Johnson else could it be I know Adam Eda, but Eda. Did, he, did he play any part though Did it not just go over well, the top I, I, Remind me M- Michael Does it not just go over the top And Johnson volleys it in Or smashes it in Sorry It, just, it seemed to taste, like I, I think Ida Is maybe offside But he's, he's got nothing to do with play So the balls came through It came over the top Johnson's cut inside And the rifle one Right over the goalkeeper And Ida's nowhere near When the balls came in So If that's and if you only play it's, The game's completely gone So I just For me I just think it needs to be quicker It's got to be more Precise And I think Just to Clear up confusion Because You, you need to know there's, I'd ra- I would now rather watch A game of football At home Because you get Commentary You get told what's what You don't want to celebrate goals anymore I, I just think It just takes too long bar To make To come to actual decisions And you're sitting there, you're like, oh, is it a goal, is it not a goal, is it offside? There's just not enough communication between the between VAR and, and us, and I feel sort of like it's, t- it's taken away from the atmosphere. Yeah. Definitely when a goal comes in, it's sort of, do you, do you celebrate, do you not celebrate? Players are exactly the same now, so I don't know, I just, for me... See the un- unfortunate bit about that though, Michael, is that not is that not like the absolute core of VAR that, that's the issue here? You know, even, even if they were then able to provide you with a bit more communication or whatever... You still wouldn't be able to celebrate the goal. Do you know what I mean? If you're saying that's the issue for you, really, it's just the it's the core concept of R that that damages that. Absolutely, I I think it's you're, you're right, and it's I understand why it's brought in and it's everywhere now. So it's I just don't I just don't think I think the te- I think the technology is is great, but the how it's put across I just don't think it works, and and, and that's that's my honest opinion on it. But I just think if in the stadium you're watching the game, it needs to be quicker. It's got to be faster. We've got to know why decisions have been made, and then you, I fair enough you can still disagree with it. But if you've seen lines that have drawn up, it's hard to argue against that. It's hard to argue against if it's a handball, if it's offside, or whatever else. But when they're not drawn up, you're left thinking what is actually going on. So that's Michael. The thing is, you sound fair. But I'll pick you up on one statement. When you see the lines, it's hard to argue. You. People still do it We've been doing it all season uh, I know I, a bit, a <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're too sensible Michael That's the thing But anyway thank you to Michael In Burnside Let's take more of your calls After these And now a word from our podcast sponsor Lookers Motor Group They've got Jaguar, Land Rover And Volvo showrooms Across Glasgow and the West So you can find the new Or used approved car That's right for you The Land Rover showrooms Can be found in Motherwell Darnley and the north of Glasgow With their Jaguar and Volvo showroom Found in Hillington And right now at lookers.co.uk You can browse and shop 24-7 Value your part exchange Order and take delivery From the comfort of your own home Every approved used Jaguar, Land Rover or Volvo comes with a minimum of 12 months warranty, roadside assistance, MOT test warranty, an independent mileage and service history check, software updates and lots more. Check out lookers.co.uk to get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today. Now back to the podcast. Get ready to enjoy unmissable Sky TV together with Netflix in one simple subscription. So you can watch award-winning shows like Succession, The White Lotus, House of the Dragon, The Crown, True Detective, The Last of Us, Stranger Things, Chino- uh, We've only got 30 seconds. Oh, I'll skip to the best bit. It's never been easier with Sky Stream. There's no dish and you can cancel any time. Start your one-month free trial today at sky.com.
Request Sky Ultimate TV subscription abroad by minimum speed, 25 megabits per second, 31 pump per month up to trial. New Sky TV customers only, 18 plus terms apply. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Evans and Mark Wilson are here on 01419511025. That is the number you need. We're looking back on today's football. Uh, we've had calls in from Celt- let's say from Celtic Park, revolving around Celtic Park. The three-one win against St Johnston. Really want to hear the contrasting emotions between Kilmarnock and St Mirren fans. Please give us a call. And incidentally, we had a big debate and. Discussion about the Alistair Johnson disallowed goal Celtic fan on saying it never looked offside And we've not seen any lines And then someone sent me a picture uh, Sort of showing that it looks like it was James Forrest in the build-up So when the ball's played initially And as you say Mark Maybe it's just that bit more explanation Because you go, oh well, alright, okay So it wasn't Alistair Johnson that was offside It's James Forrest, there's the lines Happy days, on we go yeah. I'm not sure that convinces everybody But the majority of people maybe I think it just clears it up a wee bit Because everybody's focused on the goal scorer The last action before it hits the net And when I, I've i seen a clip of the goal And I'm thinking Johnson's never offside there But of course They take it all the way back and It's just something you don't quite spot at first There you are um, I was going to say that clears that up No it doesn't <laughs> been, been around The line's long more wonky um, Let's bring in William Who's a Celtic fan What did you make of it today William? Uh, good evening guys How you doing? I'm probably uh, nitpicking a wee bit uh, But I thought Celtic played really well today, and I thought uh, the movement was good as well. You know, I'm just, I'm just wondering what the, the guys think of the, uh, of the substitutions when he, he took uh, Carter Vickers off and and then put Awata in the back four. We lose a goal, and then he puts uh, Lager Bielka on, and then moves Awata back into the the midfield. I was just wondering what the guys think of that. I mean, why did he not just take? Carter Vickers off and bring Lager Bielka on. It was it was just a bit strange, you know. And then we lose we lost the goal through that, you know. I thought we put we were losing losing the guy. So he sort of a, took a guy out in midfield, put him at the back, and we've lost a goal there. You know, we've lost our we've lost our impetus in the game. I thought. I think. Uh, I, don't know what the guy's thinking of. I think the manager, as soon as St Johnston score, thinks to himself, I didn't do the right thing there. And he's quickly corrected his mistake, put Iwata back into the middle of the park and brought on Lagabielka because if St Johnston were to go 3-2, then all of a sudden Celtic Park turns into an entirely different place. Um, The initial change, I think, is significant because he would rather put a midfield player at the back than bring on Lagabielka, which tells you how far out the pitcher Lagabielka, I know Navarotsky is apparently injured, but neither player has a future at Celtic. Neither Navrotsky nor Lagabielka. But at 3-1, Brendan Rodgers thinks, right, I've lost Carter Vickers. As soon as I lose Carter Vickers, they all go wobbly at the back. I've got a midfield player playing centre-back now. I'll put him back into midfield and bring on Lagabielka just to make sure that nothing silly starts to happen here. So I think he made a mistake, which he corrected. Well, pretty much that. I think... You know, he wanted home to go on the pitch um, And he, he probably thought at that time 3-0, easy street Celtic would have loads of the ball And a water starting the moves for the back That's what you want But like Hugh says Moments in games just change your thinking pretty quickly So automatically it looks like Brendan Rodgers Saying, oh I've made a mistake with that change It's rather, I need to manage the situation The current situation now And I'm better with a centre back at mm-hmm. centre back than a midfielder because St Johnson might just be encouraged. And ultimately, the ball as in the you box. Said, does it reflect on Gustav Lager Bielka and that he really would rather not use him, or, or is it just like you no, said I about d- trying to get? I, just think, I said it during the yeah, game. Look, I, maybe he just wants to bring those players further forward and doesn't doesn't you know doesn't want to make that change. But if if Lager Bielka was in his thought process a bit more or a bit closer to contention it might have been a good opportunity to just bring well, him on he's clearly, miles off, been, he's clearly miles off he's clearly miles off he probably didn't deserve it on merit to go on because that's what it's got to be you've got to merit you know playing for the club and that's the starting 11 but even if you're not in the starting 11 then you've got to be shown in training that you merit coming off the bench so when you see these guys sitting on the bench and not coming on they're sitting on the bench for a reason now it's different when the game changes And you've made a change And you, you've you only got one centre half in there Against a physical St Johnson team 
You then need to manage the situation yourself And that's why Lager Bielka comes in through necessity Just to see out the game The crucial thing here And we don't know the answer The state of Cameron Carter Vickers' body at the moment uh, Because he's clearly not 100% fit Celtic, as Mark Wilson put it earlier on Are trying to manage him But if he cannot be managed Between now and the end of the season It's very, very dangerous for Celtic Because Lagerbielka won't do it Navrotsky won't do it And the partnership of Scales and Welsh Won't do it either On the basis that Celtic need What about the big picture then William Top today Of course Rangers have the chance to Go back top tomorrow I think Celtic are, are actually playing quite well You know they, they started playing Even the Hearts blip I think I would call it a blip Because of the we hadn't lost a game For about 11-12 games there So I still think Celtic are strong. They're coming into the end of the business end of the season. And I think I think if we can get these guys... I mean, you talk about Carter Vickers there. He, he didn't have a pre-season. So I think he's been struggling through that all season because he didn't have the pre-season the same way with Johnson on the right. He's been struggling as well. So th- when you don't get that pre-season, I think you struggle the rest of the season to get up to fitness. And he's been in and out. I think he's, I think he's missed about 17, 18 games this season, which isn't great. Especially when he's your number one, uh, but it, it was just to see, see when you were talking about it, like it was moving a water really, moving a water mm. out of that position as well, changed the structure, which is which which is mere my thinking saying why are you moving a water, changing that structure? But that's what we're saying as well. Is it not just about wanting to get home on as well, and not not wanting to to um, take any of this and um, not wanting to to make the other change? You know, just. It allows you to just move a water, um, get home on the pitch. Aye, well, you could have took. I mean, you, you could have took a Riley off. You know, I mean, it's not. It's not a question of, and I gave him. I mean, the game was won at that point, so I don't understand. I mean, we lost it. We were running three nothing at that point, and then Carter Vickers goes off. We lose the goal, and then he fixes it. You know, I I just think to myself, okay, it might be a wee bit of nitpicking, but. Taking a water out of that structure where he was playing in the middle of the park, the simple thing was just to bring be a lager be Elker on and and rest Carter Vickers because he because he's uh, he's coming through uh, to get to game practice. You know that's the way I, I would have seen it, but I'd, obviously he's he's seen things different. You know it's kind of strange that was all. All right, thank you very much to William on the line. Let's bring in Hugh two Hughes for the price of one. This one's got Motherwell on his mind. How much of a disappointment was it today, Hugh? Uh, hi, how you doing? Um, it was on the cards because we do it as a team every single time. If a team needs a result, we give them it. Now, taking a performance last week with two calls of praise, Stuart Kettlewell and that Motherwell football team really need to take everything that goes against them today. Their performance, their attitude... I don't know what the tactics were today. It was We sat back, gave Aberdeen it. We made them look good. And they were absolutely shocking because they punted the ball at the back. Willie Collins' performance today, that a few strange decisions, was unbelievable. But our substitutions today, I, I physically can't understand them. Takes off two central defenders to put on a right back and a left back. Then brings off Jack Vale, who ran all the way through the game, putting pressure on to bring on young males and I understand bringing on young players and developing them but not in a game where you're chasing it that they don't have any experience they don't know what they're doing because you can see it but it was absolutely shocking today Stephen O'Donnell caused that first goal Liam Kelly gave him was, gave him crap for it he was over at halfway line Stuart Gettlewell gave him crap for it and he still comes out after the, the half time right? and you think well, what is he saying that we're not as supporters that we can see Every single week, O'Donnell is finished. He's done. At our level, he is finished for that Premier League. And Willie Collum, please explain that final decision where possible handball in the box against Aberdeen for a penalty. He stops the game to listen to VAR. The decision's obviously no. Then he just blows the final whistle. But the game was going on at that point, and I, I can't fathom out. Now, maybe you can, whether it was a handball or not. Need to watch a highlight. Shoes are obviously better. A better view on that Just to see what you've thought Yeah I don't actually know Too much about the last one um, But let's go through A couple of them On on Jack Vale Because he's been really good I think you'll agree Hugh and, and does do a lot of running Do you think he does Run his race though Because I've just 
he, he always comes off at 70 something minutes he, he doesn't finish 90 and um, I just wonder if if he'd run himself into the ground and that's why the change was made uh, 100% no because he was still there he was still running about he had plenty of energy in him you could see that and I think when you actually seen him getting subbed he even ran off the park but he was disappointed as if to say why am I getting brought off and 100% I agree with him you just I, I couldn't find him out it brings Blaney off who between Blaney and Casey were probably the two best players in the park for us today. It brings Blaney off. He thought, why? Because he, unless he's injured, that we never seen. I can maybe understand McGabby. I don't know whether McGabby took a knock in the first half and he brought him off. But then he brings O'Donnell into centre park who he, he couldn't pass a ball two yards today, never mind 20 yards. He was wanting to be a Maradona and pass, make 70 yard passes, and it just wasn't happening. He needs drop. 100% Do you think the difficulty with that was That he played very well at Ibrox And Rangers And Motherwell's last win Which was a good win It was a good win but You can't just go and Your last performance You've got No to... but you would do I mean if you were the manager though right If you were looking right Okay what did we do well last time Who needs dropped from last week It, it just wasn't going to be Stephen O'Donnell was it After doing so well at Ibrox That's what I mean I understand that Gordon But what I'm also saying is In the first 45 minutes He was honking Do you just keep him on Because of his performance last week? No but he said starting You know and dropped You said So I was talking about that We weren't talking about the substitution um, What about Mark Hughes was very angry At Willie Collins role in the game Not really sure about right at the end But the goal The only goal that separates the sides We've had the chance to look at it back Theo Bear It's ruled out for a handball By him in the build up what do you make of it? Well, I, I, again, I can't understand how Willie Collum can then go to the monitor and have a real good look at that and be so conclusive over it to say it doesn't stand. That, that is just not what VAR is and not the way the game is. They've got to understand that they've, there's got to be an element of what's the word? natural you know, elements to the game. And and these things happen without it being deliberate and chopping off goals like that because it was minimal contact in a position that wasn't outstretched. His arm was there to challenge. It was up. And I mean, his anyway, arm, his arm I, is outstretched. But as you say, it's more uh, because it's on he's, the back of the Aberdeen yeah, player like a, uh, jostling. Yeah, somebody yeah, out. yeah. So you cannot say that that's intentional in any way or it's assisting in a goal. It doesn't fall then into his path and he puts it into the net. So this is where referees, I think, have to understand that. Element of football Not the laws Not the rules That they've been told But an element of football That's going to happen Within games That you can't just say Ah That touched an arm We are going to Chop that goal off I thought it was a ridiculous decision this And was, hard done by This was Stuart Kettlewell's Take on it Hugh I have You know I did say this previously So I'm being consistent It's not just emotional Because we've lost A game of football uh, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm completely at a loss And I have to say That the fourth official Today was excellent In terms of the way That he speaks to uh, The coaching staff He knows it's a, an Emotional game He understands that We're going to get Frustrated at time uh, and, and he tries to do it In a methodical way But I also think He's one of our Best officials as well uh, Matthew McDermott I think he was excellent In how he conducts himself With the benches um, But under the circumstances When points are so valuable um, we want to keep a run going um, and to chalk off uh, the first goal with the goal that we get through Lennon Miller be they a deflection um, they come back and they have a look at it um, we had a situation earlier in the season and I've said this to Matthew at the side of the pitch he, he, wasn't, the, he wasn't the referee um, we had a situation uh, against Ross County where the ball's controlled quite clearly by the arm you know you can look through the archives and see this one uh, the hands above the head player controls the ball falls to him he shifts it inside the pitch and it results in a goal and we were told categorically because it wasn't the goal scorer that we don't look at that again uh, that that's that, that's not a reason for chalking off the goal if the referee's missed it it's not a clear and obvious error I was told that categorically so I stand corrected when that happens and this is where I'm very factual I stand corrected I don't talk about it again but I now start talking about it again because Steel Bears contesting a ball um, the ball looks as if it's maybe come off his bicep you know just <laughs> marginally come off his bicep lands to Lennon Miller and what we want to do now is we want to go and dissect it and look back on that and see that that's an impact on the goal well, clearly uh, not happy I do think there's a distinction I can't even remember The Ross County one But the way he's explained that there I, I don't know if there's a breakdown In communication Just because Theo Baird Doesn't score the goal That doesn't mean You wouldn't look at it again Because they're looking for Any infringement In the build up to the goal I think where the confusion Comes in is If it hits the goal scorer's arm At all By your side Tucked in Non-intentional If it hits the goal scorer's hand At all The goal doesn't stand mm -hmm. 
if it hits someone else's hand in the build up to the goal, it has to be deemed a handball offence, if you like. You're yeah. looking for the outstretched arm or the unnatural position. So it's not official. The, the way that Stuart Kettlewell's put it there, as far as my understanding is, it's not that they shouldn't look at a handball by Theo Bear. I, I don't think that's. But if the way managers it works. are unsure. And that they will get a fan on earlier on. They said they'd rather watch football on the telly now than be at the game because you you understand better what's going on. We've got on our hands an unfathomable game that wasn't meant to look like this. Yeah, I, I do get that, but sometimes a bit of misinformation gets out there as well, which is not ideal because um, I don't think that's the case. For me, the contention is. Is that a handball offence by Theo Bear? I think people are barking up the wrong tree by saying they shouldn't even be looking at Theo Bear's handball. That, that's not the way it works. Yeah, it's I was going to agree with you. Listen, I think VR is right to highlight that because they're terrified that, that there's, the ball's hit the hand. My problem is when Willie Colm goes over sure, yeah, and looks at Is it a handball offence? Yeah, yeah, that's a valid argument. That's my problem. And, and this is where, with you, obviously. This is where referees have got to understand. I hate... What I hate is The referees don't know the game And ex-players maybe in, in the VR And telling them this and that and the next thing But they've got to understand The dynamics of the game um, Situations, how they arise um, How to manage that And how to be fair about it And I don't think they are At the minute And that decision backs it up for me Quickly if you can Hugh Because I'm a bit pushed for time Are you now is that is the top six dream Taking a bit of a dent Is it now back to looking over your shoulder With the combination of results today? No, I, I, I've always thought we we're going to be safe anyway. Uh, we were mid-table. Uh, I would forget the top six because there's a lot of rebuilding being done during, during the summer for us. So stick to mid-table, yeah. get to the end of the season and we'll deal with it then. Fair enough. Thank you very much to Hugh. It's a great time to call. We'll try and get you on next. The winning team all season long. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hopefully going to hear from Brendan Rodgers very soon Let's bring in Jack Who's a Kilmarnock fan Jack, talk to me How good was that today? Oh, it was absolutely amazing I'm buzzing I mean, I what I about the agree. contrast? What are you thinking at 2-0 down? Um, well, you'd think I would be Thinking we're going to get beat But funnily enough I stuck a tenner on Kelly to win Oh, <laughs> hold on a minute oh. to how, how much to win? 25 to 1 Oh my I mean I'll, I have I'm contractually obliged To tell people to gamble responsibly But you are in for a good Saturday night Jack Was that blind Blind hope Or did you actually see a way back? Blind hope Who are rubbish to first I love that We are so see bad that? here So I know what I'm going to do I'm going to put a tenner on as a winning the game I was actually hoping that Jack would say No I could sense that we weren't two goals <laughs> down Really we weren't that far out of it But, but, but they were though I think Yeah, you, yeah Jack, said, Jack said they were hopeless Which makes it even worse For St Mirren Because they've, they've Then gone out And the roof's caved in Now For a team to lose five goals in the second half Two goal lead Totally unacceptable Stephen Robinson will have gone off his head And rightly so Uh the two and a half thousand fans, we all get a bit overexcited by it. Look at the job he's done. And today, all the good work's gone up in smoke. What was the key to the turnaround, Jack? Um, well, I thought we were going to make some changes at half time, but we came out with the exact same team. And to be honest, I was thinking, oh, for God's sake, we've not, we've not made any subs. <laughs> then within 20 minutes, we've scored five goals. I just, was, I don't actually know how we managed it. <laughs> what is that, Mark? Because. Is that the old Is that Derek McInnes sort of You lot got yourselves into this mess You get yourself out And you've got 10 minutes to do so Is that one of them Do you sometimes Go the opposite way When everybody's expecting changes Well You'd have to imagine so Unless Derek's changed The formation in any way I don't know um, Jack on the line might be able to tell us But if it's the same personnel More often than not It's a rant from the manager and sometimes it's short and sharp. Sometimes it's not a prolonged rant that takes 15 minutes. Sometimes it's a, a few stern words and a walk out the dressing room. I've been in the dressing room, Adele. Uh, I know how he operates. Um, so there's no doubt he would have told his players what he expected in the second period. And that was a fast start. Now, they get the fast start, they get the goal, but then they get the penalty right away. So they've got something to build on. But when you've got those quality players in wide areas and you've got... Competent uh, strikers who know where the back of the net is Once you get two You've got a real chance mm. of winning the game However, I, I did say that they would go on and win 
And stretch early. I didn't think they'd score five yeah. in the second period against a St Mirren side who had only lost 32 goals this season up until that point. So, brilliant performance, shows the good work's continuing at Kelly. Um, and again, their only real disappointment is going out the cup last Kept week. Kept his head. You know, they, they, they lose to Kilmarnock, they lose to Aberdeen last week, an Aberdeen team that can't beat anybody, and they contrive to lose 3 1 to them in the cup. Then he's two down at half time to St Mirren, but kept his head, put out the same team, and to say that he got his reward is an understatement. Yeah, I mean, Jack, up to fourth, looking pretty good for that European push. I've I've already booked up to go with Scotland to the Euro, so I need to get my money saved just in case Kelly get there too. Listen, Jack, when Scotland win the Euros, it'll all be worth it. Thank you to Jack from Kilmarnock, a man who stuck a tenner on Kilmarnock when they were two 0 down at half time. There we go. Uh, how do you think Stephen Robinson took it? Very badly. I'm shell shocked to be honest with you. It's, it's quite um, it's very difficult to explain. You know, we're in total control. Um, I thought we were excellent in the first half. And we said at half time, the same again, and we need to do the same again. We started brightly to be fair, and we should have been 3 0 up, make it was onside. Um, and from then, they, they didn't change anything. We didn't bring any subs on, it was the same shape. Um, I'd love to say it was a tactical change that you know, caused us problems, but it wasn't. We didn't deal with a ball tripped over the top, um, and the front two threw us about, you know, they, they, they bullied us. Um, and, and as a collective, we didn't, you know, we didn't stop that momentum, they got their goal. Um, and uh, you know we we tried to say slow the game down, calm down, don't give them another opportunity. And you know we spoke again as a collective, myself included, in the dressing room to say, you know we've got to learn from that. And the momentum starts swinging the other way. How can we deal with that? And we didn't. That, that first word probably sets the tone. There's not. There might have been anger and rage in the yeah. dressing room, but it, it's just shock more than anything from yeah. Stephen Robinson. And he's been very honest. He's admitting that uh, you know no subs by. Kilmarnock at half time Kept the same shape And then They turned the game around Off their own back And he's also admitting That the front two From Kilmarnock Threw us about So they weren't strong enough Mentally or physically They've collapsed And You know It, it didn't pause for breath there That's a man that just won't get to sleep tonight That's a big one Mental collapse I think You know Just been Not been strong enough To deal with the onslaught And be tight enough just to say okay we've conceded two goals here which like you might expect against Kilmarnock with, with the players Derek Scott at the top end of the pitch but then not being able to stop the rot that, that comes down to your mental yeah. toughness and it's not been visible a lot for St Mirren this season but there's no doubt it was visible in that same half Stephen Robinson would be as well going up to St Andrews and joining the Dazzler in that <laughs> oh, no, caravan no no no. Oh, just, no, 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 no 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 you don't want to be no in that one, caravan with him no one should do that just Come forget on. his troubles and let the Dazzler drive him mad uh, hmm, less said about that the better I think thanks to Jack again a man who's made financial gain out of Scottish football's <laughs> madness today I'll go to the European trip put that in the kitty for his <laughs> exactly. Scotland and St Mirren European uh, Kelly away days I'll cover the home and away strip yeah. for the, the journey 01419511025 might be able to squeeze uh, more in what about Brendan Rodgers would you like his take on Celtic's 3-1 yes. victory very good I'm really pleased three excellent goals players getting some minutes Cameron Carter Vickers playing and and, and coming back and so really really pleased for that um, so yeah overall I thought from the start of the game there was a great feeling in the stadium with the crowd and uh, players started the game well and um, yeah well, it was I thought overall very good performance only only downside was when I made all the changes we uh, just in our pressing we went a little bit passive and that gave them a little bit more time on the ball than what we would have wanted but, uh, but overall we scored three goals Lots of VAR decisions today, but but that's also a compliment to the team because <clears throat> with so many aggressive moments in the game, so there's lots of uh, parts of the game to be looked at in that aspect, and so that's a good sign from from myself. Lots of VAR decisions today, he said quietly without going any further, given that he's on a charge on the 28th of March. To be fair, I, 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 that made my ears prick up. But when he follows up with the next sentence, I think he means how often he's in those attacking areas that. Means there's a VAR decision to be made with offside. I don't f again because we've said it with offside. You can only complain so much because unless you can prove something that that Hawkeye can't, then you know it's hard to be too aggrieved the at them. The overriding concern 
for Brendan Rodgers was to finish top of the league and I think his opening remark three excellent goals end of story scored three times could have scored at least another three times uh, job done uh, and now be in front of the telly at 12 o'clock tomorrow to see how Dundee can do against Rangers and when we all come back we come back onto a level playing field players all rested no Europe for anybody to complicate matters midweek and it's then as Mark said earlier about the, the Kilmarnock players and their mentality and the St Mirren players it's then all about your mentality because you are now between that rock and the hard place push has now arrived at shove just got visions the year is 2047 and James Forrest has added the third goal for Celtic <laughs> in a game against St. he's Johnson. an important guy in the, in the run in after the, the international break he is an important guy because he is course and distance with this stuff 17 years of doing it for Celtic and where Bernardo or t- at home or, or even O'Reilly or whoever might not have experienced this kind of finish they've known Ange Postacoglu finishes but this kind of finish where it's you know virtually neck and neck you'll need a James Forrest for that you've got to say you know sharp, he's, he's he? scored more goals against St Johnson than any other opponent yeah, in his career yeah he scored four against him one time. Well, that, that'll help. Anyway, yeah. it means that it's over to Rangers tomorrow. Can they take back top spot? Here's Philippe Clement. So as a player, it, it's really difficult. And uh, the older you become, I start to talk now like the really old people, uh, the more incredible, nice moments you have, but the more disappointments you have also, and uh, disappointing moments. And you learn out of that. You learn also to switch faster. So that's that's now the challenge to do it really fast. So I will look everybody in the eyes and if I see somebody still with his head down, I will see that he's raised again and with the chest in front to be ready on some. And that's it, Hugh. Psychology Sundays yep. back over to Rangers. What can they do tomorrow? Well, people keep saying they, they look leggy. Uh, that was the cause of the defeat from Motherwell, allegedly. That was the cause of the defeat from Benfica, allegedly. Uh, tomorrow, no allegedly. Tomorrow is about reality. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of state you're in. You have to get through those ninety minutes. If you don't, another twist and turn may have occurred in the championship race. Celtic have done their bit today. Rangers have to respond tomorrow. We look at Dens as being a potentially testing venue. Mark Dundee have earned that right. At the same time, Rangers went there under trying circumstances and won so convincingly earlier this season. Yeah, but at this stage of the season Every game is difficult And particularly coming off the back of a European game Facing a team I think who's won three or four In the bounce at Dens Park It is going to present challenges for Rangers But they've got a big squad They may rotate one or two But they'll understand the importance of three points tomorrow Never mind the performance Three points is key The big games just keep coming thick and fast It's been quite the Saturday in the Scottish Premiership The headline is that Celtic go top A 3-1 win against St Johnston Climbs Brendan Rodgers' side back to the summit But of course Rangers now have that game in hand It takes place at Dundee tomorrow Game of the day Result of the day For the way it came about Has to be Kilmarnock 5 St Mirren 2 St Mirren led by 2 goals to nil at the break But what a comeback From Kilmarnock Motherwell thought they were on a good run Aberdeen on a dreadful run Looking for a manager And the Dons were the ones Who take all three points away From Fir Park That 1-0 victory An easy day for Hibs Beating Livingston by 3 goals to nil All scored in the first half And Hearts have pretty much Had third place sewn up for a while But uh, sign maybe that Ross County could make moves beating the Jambos 2-1 in Dingwall whatever happens tomorrow add that to today we li- then look back on it all from 6 o'clock on Monday night and the GBX is up next I wear a few different hats as a CFO. You know, sometimes it's referred to as chief fixing officer. (laughs) Wherever there's a fire in the business, um, you know, I'm often there first. Whatever hats CFOs like Imran need to wear, Sage's tools and insights can make sure they fit. Sage, helping business flow.